Chinch, support this week for the mayor's office is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0, baby. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code the mayor at manscaped.com. I tell you what though, I love these things, Chinch. I've had them. I've had Manscaped 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and this is the 4.0. This one has a new sleek design. It's perfect for guys like me, though, dude. I'm one of the hairiest guys going. That's a fact. And for, and as the fact. And forever, man, forever. I've been looking for the best trimmers. Even going way back years of when I was playing, I'd always nick myself up, cut myself as the worst. These trimmers right here, man, they are the best. They are the absolute best. Trims up my back, trims up my arm, the jewels, whatever it takes. Yeah. But this trimmer is the absolute best. The 4.0, the lawnmower from Manscaped. I can vouch for that. I know Sean wears a sweater 24 hours a day, <laughs> 365 days a year, and he needs this. He sent me one. I'm so psyched. I shave with it. That's how good you got, it is. That's how yeah, and Chinch, I've tried every every one you can try, every clipper you could possibly buy. I've tried. Yeah. This by far is the best. Yeah, Sean the puts best. a clipper on his. It, it'll break the clippers, but not the manscaper. Yeah. So every, everyone, do. everyone should have this, bro. Everyone yeah, look, should have one of these. They absolutely should. So here's how you get it. Okay, you get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code the mayor, right, Sean? The mayor. Yes. At manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping. Manscaped.com and use the code the mayor. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And you can look as clean as Casey does now. When he, <laughs> when he doesn't use a Manscaped, it's like Sasquatch. There's the, the people call cops. Unbelievable. Lawnmower 4.0. Go get it. It's unbelievable, Chinch. <laughs> Do it. Hall of Fame broadcaster Marty Brenneman here, and you're stepping inside the mayor's office. Here's your host, Sean Casey. All right, brother. We're here. Yes. Got, what's up, Chinch? How you doing, my man? Oh, we got a good one today, brother. <laughs> we, got, we got a good one today. I see you boxing, which I love. We got a good one today. Let me introduce him really quick. Mm -hmm. um, one of the greatest boxers, you know, this, this sport's ever seen. 2015 <laughs> International <laughs> Boxing Boxing Hall of Fame. So let's bring on one of the greatest boxers ever, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, one other thing, Mr. Mancini, we have a mutual connection. You trained my brother, Rob Cenchimino, for the Pan Am Games years ago. Uh, one of my brother's best friends is Jess King. Uh, yes, yes. Also yes. was told the guy Big Paul, he wants to say hi to you. So all Big those Pauly. guys. Are, yeah. So yeah. this you, is you great for me. When I seen the name, Rob, I said, I do know that name, man. I do know that name. Yeah, that's my big brother, man. And funny enough, real quick story. About a month ago, my brother runs like restaurants and stuff. I don't know if you remember, but uh, some dude ran into one of his restaurants and was like picking fights with people. And my brother put him in like a choke called armbar and dragged him out of there. And it had probably a lot to do with how you taught him how to do that stuff. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those guys, those guys like Justin, them guys and Big Paul, trust me. That's how I got my purple belt. You had to pass Big Paul, that, that shot. Yeah. Big Paul is about 6'4", but he's about 350, mm -hmm. ah, 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 So you had to get Paul in the guard. Yep. Now, even if it was a white belt, and black belts couldn't do it. And Paul, you know, he was, he was he's about 400 pounds. Yep. One of the most athletic people. But I'm telling you, when he gets on his toes, he was like, he was like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> on his toes, you know? Yeah, twinkle toes. <laughs> Polly would they, Polly would get these guys down. Black belts would tap out. You know what presses? You know what presses weight and get his weight on these guys. Black belts were tapping out because he's he, he, he unbelievable. Polly was a football player. He was like an all-state football player in yeah. Hawaii. Right, and right. He knew how to move, man. He knew how to move. 
So I got my first belt. All I do is try to get one leg in the, in the gutter. <laughs> one leg. I can't get the whole body. You know? That's great. That's great. So they all say hi. That's awesome. Oh, I love awesome. It. I love it. So, Ray, what are you doing now, man? I know you're back in Youngstown. Can Tell us what you're doing in Youngstown and what do you got going on? Because it seems like you always got something going on, bro. Well, you got <laughs> to friend, brother. It's trying. Well, I came back to Youngstown in 2014. You know, I was 30 years in Southern California, uh, Santa Monica, for 30 years. Um, but it's funny, I never considered it. Guys would say to me, hey, man, you know, where do you live? And I go, where are you from? I said, from Youngstown, Ohio. And they go, don't you live in Santa Monica? I go, yeah, 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 but that's my kid's home. And, you know, I never thought. And I always knew I wanted to come back. Uh, I didn't know when, didn't know how. Then the opportunity arose in 2014, November, two days before Thanksgiving, back, and I've been there ever since. And it's been great. It's been a great, uh, great opportunity for me. It was the right time. My youngest went off to college. I sat my two oldest down. Look, I have an opportunity to go home for business. And they go, Pop, Pop, you did your job. Go, you'll come see us. We'll see you. But that's the thing. Usually it's the kids who get up and leave. I'm the one who got up and left. So, <laughs> it, so really, it worked on my mind for a while. It really was like trippy, you know. But it's funny now because my daughter's in Miami. My other son's in New York. My older son's in, in um, my youngest is in New York. And my, and my older son's in L.A. So I got them all three spots. So I'm closer to them now anyhow. So. Well, what what about we see a crib in the background there? Like you, you, didn't, you didn't have a baby. We don't know about. Yeah, recently, yeah. No, no. I I have a granddaughter. And my wife's got a, two grandchildren. A granddaughter and a grandson. Her daughter just had. So we have the the, the crib here. Her daughter and granddaughter sleep in it. Uh, her grandson will be sleeping in it. And then when my granddaughter comes, she'll sleep in it. So you know, I I was really like right across, and I moved it. You know, because I said, look, that is, uh, I said left it there. You're right. It gives it, it, gives it some. Like, <laughs> it softens so, you up. It softens you up a little. You're a tough boxer. It's nice to see the little yeah. kid stuff in there. Ray, the real question before we get going is: Ray Boom Boom Man C is still changing poopy diapers? That's what I want to know. It. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Oh, that's a done deal. My daughter said, "Pop, would you mind taking it off?" You know, it never bothered me. I changed all my kids' diapers. Your father, you look forward to that. Thank you. He's shitting everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Funny because like my, my granddaughter, she's pistol, man. First of all, her father, the father of my uh, my granddaughter, my, my daughter's uh boyfriend is he's six seven and he's a professional basketball player. He's but now my kids are Cuban. Uh -huh. He's Puerto Rican and he plays in Puerto Rico and Central America. So um First of all, my granddaughter, you know, first language will be Spanish. She'll speak Spanish as well as English. I talked to her, not but my ex, my ex mother in law, she, they, they live with her. She speaks no English. My, you know, from, my, my ex wife speaks to her nothing but Spanish. I speak to her in Spanish. My daughter, who speaks fluent Spanish, and her grand and her father who speaks fluent Spanish, speaks to her in English. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? What are you crazy? Come on, up, Pop. They get, she gets enough Spanish from you, abuela, mom. Oh, yeah. But, uh, it's, so she's growing. So she's she's a year and a half, but she wears almost fourteen. Four. <laughs> she's gonna be tall. She's gonna be tall. And we're gonna make her a baller, baby. We're gonna make her. There a you go. <laughs> she's gonna be taking, she's gonna be taking it far deep in prodigious, or she be. I love what? it, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sean, wait, I got to interrupt just because you talk about, like, athleticism in a family, and I, I meant to tell this story. I, I just can't wait to tell this story. So I did get to meet you one time, Ray. Uh, my brother took me to uh, – Jess was doing a boxing thing. And I, I told Sean this story the other day, and I've told this story. I've worked with a lot of athletes in my life. It was the greatest athletic endeavor I've ever seen anybody do. <clears throat> you walked into your gym, and there were, like, ten of us in there, and you grabbed a jump rope. <laughs> And you stood in the middle of the room and started jumping rope, but for the people at home, like like Rocky, like training Rocky Four montage, jumping rope, straight face, one full hour, and had twenty five conversations without losing his breath. It was the single greatest athletic achievement I have ever seen. And you were like in your fifties when I met you, so that's that's kind of genes we're working with here. I appreciate you remember that. <laughs> for sure. I, I, you know, one thing I, I, I don't know, Sean, 
baseball they make you guys jump rope. I don't remember ever jumping rope when I played oh, baseball. I, I jumped rope. I, I did jump rope. I go three minutes at a time and I almost <laughs> go to cardiac. I almost go to cardiac arrest. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, for athletes, you know, basketball players, I learned they were jump, we were jump, played, playing, you know, bat, bitty ball, you know, and uh, it's the best athletic uh, endeavor you could do as far as exercise. So one exercise that works upper body, lower body muscles simultaneously, and you know, and you not only gain your your your, you get you gain your win, you gain uh, your stamina, but the muscle it builds in your legs and in your arms is tremendous. I encourage anybody, if you can get a jump rope, get the jump rope. It's now, a lot of people, well, well, I, I I miss too many times. You always keep moving. You know what I do? I used to do too. I, I a lot of times I go and I forget the jump rope. When I'm in my when I travel, when I travel and I'm in a hotel room, I assimilate the rope. Really? That's oh. called the invisible rope. You do the same things, you do the same exercises, but like you had a jump rope in your hand, but it's the invisible rope. And you're moving the whole time. Wow. Believe me. Uh, wow. it's this one single exercise you could do anywhere. You do the two by four space. Don't need anything but just your body. Good to know. In the well, mindset. In the let, mindset. Let's take it. Let's take that back, Ray. To when you know where the, where where the jump and rope for Ray Mancini started was back in Youngstown, Ohio. I know that. Take us yeah. back all the way back there, brother. Because listen, I'm from Pittsburgh, where you know we're still you know we're still mill working town. You know until we weren't, and so was. That's Youngstown. right. That's right. That's right. We're, right. we're blue collar. You know we're blue collar here. You guys are blue collar there. Can you talk about that? Um, you know. Growing up in Youngstown, yeah. you know, the steel mills, uh, you know, your dad, you know, just yeah. the, the, all the influences that made you the man you were. Well, so it's funny you said that because we were second biggest steel producer in the world. Who was one? Yeah. This <laughs> well, we were two. We were second biggest steel producing city in the world. So growing up, you know, it was a Pollyanna life. You know, you could always, you know, at that time, all they taught, I remember, they, all they taught was, Go to school, graduate high school. Once you graduate, get a job in a mill, meet a nice girl, raise a, get married, raise a family. And I tell people, good life, man. Right. Quality of life, good life. It just ain't the life I wanted. I wanted something different. Nothing, I'm not saying better, different. So <laughs> my whole neighborhood was gym rat, uh, were mill rats. You know, mill rats, there's a term, and I don't mean that affectionately. Everyone knows that means yeah. affectionate term for guys who worked in the mills. My brother worked in the mills. My father worked at a fabricating plant. It wasn't a steel mill, but it was a uh, general fireproofing where they made a steel office furniture. He worked there for 40 years. And I, you know, and, and I just, 1977, September 19th, 1977, Black Monday, it's known as, mm. the mill shut down. And unbeknownst to anybody, it happened in one day, over 5,000 men lost their job. Wow. In one month, over 25,000 men. Six months, over 50,000 men lost their jobs. And to this day, we've never fully recovered. It decimated my town. Decimated my town. So uh, when we talk about blue-collar workers, that's all we were, man. That's all we knew. They didn't, and at that time when you were going to school, they didn't advocate, you know, learning the arts, you know, being a pro baseball player, be a pro athlete, be a pro fighter. But to them, that was craziness, right? <laughs> so... When I when I was a young boy, people always said, "What do you want to be when you professional fighter, the world champion?" From my father, oh, isn't that cute? Little boy wants to be a fighter, <laughs> you, know, you know. And but I played all my other sports, um, like football, board, football, basketball, baseball, year round, right? What did we to play? We didn't have soccer at the time, which now we know how big soccer is, right? But we didn't have soccer. I didn't know anything about soccer until like I was in high school in the. Uh, New York, New York Cosmos, right? It was a yeah. new sort of league. Yes, they, yes. And they signed Beckenbauer, the three biggest guys in the league: <laughs> Shinaglia, Beckenbauer, and Pele. Yeah, wow. You know, what, what was your I, best? What was I your best sport? Boxing. What was your best sport other than boxing? You must have been great at everything. I, I always tell people that whatever the season was, I, I, look, I was a good athlete. I wasn't say I was an exceptional athlete, but I was a good athlete. But I was fundamentally sound in everything. The reason I say that is because <clears throat> I got to high school. I played. Sophomore in high school, but I started as freshman, starting tailback. I broke the freshman rushing record. 
sophomore year, playing on special teams. And going into my junior, I was slotted as the number one tailback for Cardinal Mooney High School. Cardinal Mooney High School in Northeast Ohio, like, you know, uh, Cincinnati, they have to, yes. you know, it's big for football. Pittsburgh, big, all, we're known for our football, right? So Cardinal Mooney's one of the state powerhouses. I was a buck 32. And the coach said, hey, you got to hit the weights. Hit the weights, I got to make weight. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I can't, you know. And that's when I knew in my mind, Probably better, you know, I wanted to be a fighter. You know, the season ends in November, going to the playoffs in December. The gold, the Golden Gloves are in January, less than a month to train for them. And that's when I started saying, you know, thanks for no thanks. I'm going to move on. I'm going to be, I want to be a fighter. And I went into the coach's office and told him that. Coach, I give up football, focus on being a fighter. Never forget what he told me. Ray, and, and, and I'll tell you the story after. Ray, you can never go anywhere. You're not going to go nowhere as a fighter. What are you going to do? You're going to get punch drunk or something. Come on. We can get you a scholarship here. Not to a big college, but maybe to a small college, you know. <laughs> and I said, no, no, I'm going to be a fighter. I went off. But, Sean, maybe you understand, both of you guys. Don't understand. I never needed anybody to believe in me, thank God. Because I didn't believe enough in myself. And I think, you know, the good Lord believed enough in me. I didn't even, and my parents believed in me. Oh, my, my seat's going down. Now, <laughs> my seat went down. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, here we are. But I said, but you know how it is? Now they have kids, and my kids play sports. I got into it, one of my son's basketball coach. My son played basketball, got off of basketball school. And I ripped him a new one at the end of the season because I couldn't believe it. I said, Ray, all I am is a, as a high school coach. I said, yeah, man, that's all you are. You saw I don't understand that. You're supposed to be a builder of men, not a breaker of men. You build these kids up. You don't build, break them down. What's the matter with you? And, you know, am I, these kids, that's why so many guys, and I'm sure you understand, don't, that don't, from high school, they don't go anywhere. That's why I tell them, you got kids who've been there four years with you, busting their ass, to paying the dues, to get wait for that opportunity to play their senior year because they're never going to, never play sports after this. Right. Yeah, you've got a, right. a freshman or, or a sophomore put in front of them because they're the old man, you're sucking up to the old man. Look. If it's LeBron, I get it. I mean, as a freshman, but you ain't got no LeBrons here. <laughs> you got kids, you kids that are good for, that'll be playing for the next three years. But you got a kid that's been busting his ass here. Let him give him the time. I don't understand high school coaches why they don't understand build men up. That's the most informative time you can break them down. What we that us from my own experience, I didn't have that belief in myself. <laughs> I would have been like. I need to cut down. They, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to prove these sons of the guns. I'm going to prove them wrong because that was me. But other guys ain't always that way. So I tell the story because when I was a, I made my high school Hall of Fame, right? And I told that story at Butter Stacey. And everyone's laughing. And the coach that was that was sitting in front row, he's laughing. And I went and I finally looked at him. I said, uh, I said, Mr. Butchie, I want you to know I waited all these years to tell you. I don't do nothing small. I walk big, I talk big, I live big. I do nothing small. If you're not, and they're laughing. But you know, I don't understand. To this day, there's four guys who they were on that. One of them was my, was my basketball coach, my freshman basketball. Two of them were, they all want to take credit for that story. They laugh. Oh, we thought we never go no, we didn't. And I'm thinking to myself, why the hell would you want to take credit for that story? <laughs> why would you want to be jerk, jerk off that told me I wasn't going to go nowhere? And then why would you want to take credit for that? Never understood that, right? Amazing. But <laughs> so, play all sports. Dance your question. So I gave up football my junior. I gave up basketball my sophomore year because after I was going right after school, from, from um, after school, I go right to the gym, train. From four to five thirty, go right across the street and practice basketball from six to eight. I caught mono. My body broke down. I was mm. doing, then I was coming home, you know, tired, <laughs> trying to do my schoolwork. So I gave up basketball my sophomore year. Gave up junior. The only sport I was able to hold on to was baseball. And the coach told me there, it was one of my football coaches, and I and I love this man forever. And I'll tell you who he is in a minute. One day I was in the gym, uh, you know, at a second period, at a workout. It was a study hall, but I worked out, you know, came in and he said, Ray, 
So you're gonna he's our one of our football coach. He's our defensive coordinator. So you're gonna give up football. I said, yes, sir. So you one of my you one of my, you know my one of my players. You're one of my best players. Well, I understand. I appreciate it, but I'm you know. I said okay, then you go and you be the best you can be, and you get us that world championship. And I tell people to this day, I get choked up because I can't how much that meant to me. Mm. Mr. Stoops, Mr. Ron Stoops, Bobby Stoops, Coach, and Mike Stoops, and, 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 yes. uh, and Mark Stoops, Coach Kentucky, their father. Because they were my neighbors. They were next street over. I tell people this day how much that meant to me as a kid. High school kid, but you needed that in reinforcement from somebody outside of your family and yourself. Mm. So he was my baseball coach. And he was a hell of a baseball player, John, Mr. Stoops. Believe me, Mike Stoops, who coached Arizona, Mike was a hell of a baseball player. Bobby never played baseball. I don't know. Mark played baseball. Bobby <laughs> didn't play for whatever reason. He was a football guy. But Michael was a hell of a baseball player. And so he said to me, Ray, when you can make it, you come out and you're going to play. And he let me play because I, because football, the amateur program, uh, amateur uh Tournaments were like slowing down, they started to get in the fall. But what I'm saying is, that was the only sport I was able to hold on to was baseball, right? Then of course I played summer league, and then I played for the Connie Mack League we had here, right? Yeah. Now <laughs> going into our, I was 18. You know the the Connie Mack uh, tournament. Yep. Ohio has the biggest tournament of them all. We have yep. 26 teams. The winner out of Ohio usually is favored to win the World Series, right? So. That we go, so now we go. My team, we make it to the. Uh, we got beat. During, we got beat, but now we go to the finals. Play a team from Cincinnati, Cincinnati Midland. Yeah, Midland. They're they're, they're legit every year. <laughs> Midland Redskins. Yeah. We played him the first game. He was a pitcher. Actually, got drafted. I forgot his name. So he threw me some lazy deuce. I jacked it. Over <laughs> <laughs> I hit a jack. We win the game, right? I mean, I, I mean, we win the game. That tournament, I, I just. I had a tournament. I had all the tournament. I, I spread the ball well. Then I made the all state team as center fielder. I played center field. Wow. wow. Now, I, so I jacked it over the 320 ball. And we win the game. Now, we go to, we go to the playoff the, the, for the championship. We get beat the championship. But both two teams go to the, to the uh, regional tournament, which was in um, <laughs> Zanesville. Yep. And, uh, and so now um, we go uh, and we play. In, uh, for the, the regional tournament, and we got beat again in the championship. We had no arms left, no arms. And I, you know, I was kind of looking forward to it, and I was, because I knew I was going to be turning pro. But what the reason I say this, because making the All-State championship team in Ohio, I got an offer. There was a, there was a scout there from the Toronto Blue Jays. Wow. Me a contract. Oh, wow. And I don't, I, I tell people, that was 1970. I said, I don't think it's such a big deal. Because the Blue Jays, I think it was their second season. I think their initial season was 78. 79 was their second year. And I think they were offering anybody a contract. Please, come on. But it was a local guy. And I was so, so flattered by that because I made a state. And I, you know, I'll tell you this. I could take it. I sprayed the ball. And I, I was back. I played center field. I had a, I had a strong arm. I was, but it's fundamentally sound. You know what I mean? So you 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 could you could you could go get it then, right? Huh? You can put them up. That's, you can go get it to get it, cover those gaps. That you just said it. So I, I take the angle, <laughs> one bus, and what happens? I, I happen to be a lot of guys are going from trying to go from second to home or first to third. I take cut off, throw them out, and then one guy went went from they were still in second. I was covering second. They went from you know, to overthrow. I was backing up second base, threw them out of third. So again, fundamentally sound. Yes. And yes. I, and that's all they want. And I spread, but you know what? Growing up, two of my favorite players, Freddie Potek and Cookie Rojas. Yes. The wow. Of the Kansas City uh, Royals, right? Why? Cookie Rojas was five foot two. <laughs> Freddie Potek was five foot four. <laughs> They're five foot four, right? I, hey, growing up, Vic Davolino played for Pittsburgh. Yeah. Vic Davolino was about five five. He had a little punch and Judy hitter. Yeah. But man, he slapped the shit out of that ball. <laughs> I was going to ask yeah, real I, quick. I, okay, ahead, Sean. I, I tell you what. You know, it's it's unbelievable when you talk about this, Ray. Like, I love, you know, you, what you're what you're, you're in the in the book is five five, right? And and yeah. I play with I play with Dustin Majoya. I think he might have been five three, five five, whatever he was. You know. But I tell you what, what's amazing when you talk about mentality, and you said, you know what, I believed in myself because again, that's the, 
at the at the end of the day, that's the biggest that's the biggest that's thing, right? Because people are going to tell you all the time, "Hey, you can't do it. You can't do it." It doesn't matter what you say no. to me. It right. doesn't matter because I believe it. So when Dustin Pedroia <laughs> played in 2008 with the Red Sox, he locked her next to me, Ray. I tell you what, I thought he was going to because he was already a good player, rookie of the year, blah blah blah. It was his second year in the biggest. I thought he was going to take his shirt off and look like you know look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. I'm like, this guy, <laughs> this guy must be jacked, right? He takes his shirt off. It's, you know, nothing great. And I'm like, ah, well, you know, what is it about this guy? Well, I'll tell you what. Then I go watch him play. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Then I hear him talk. And what I, what I, and that year he won the MVP, right? Well, Ray, what I hear from him is this guy thinks he's 6'4, 280. That's right. Like, it does, doesn't right. matter what he looks like. Right. When he gets in the batter's box, he thinks he's 6'4, 280, about to slit your throat, rip your head off. It doesn't matter who you are. And that's what I mean. When I think, when I look at your story, Ray, and I hear you I talk, know. and you say, coming out of Youngstown, it didn't matter what anyone said. Uh, right. I knew I was going right. to be champ. Well, you know, so you just said it. You just said everything. I tell people when I speak, I just And I, and I tell, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go to tomorrow. I got invited to the guy. I said, no. He says, just to build him up. And it's his work crew. I tell people the game's here. Mm -hmm. You know that, Sean. It's here. It's here and here. Here in your heart. Here in your heart, right? I said, you got talent, I got talent. Like a fighter. You got talent, you can fight, I can fight. Who's gonna win a fight? It's here. On mm. fight night, who wants it more? Who's gonna uh, no matter what you bring, I'm gonna be able to take and I'm gonna be, come back with something. But I tell me, it's in every sport, but it's every sport. You gotta believe in yourself. I right. tell my I used to tell my kids when they're babies. When they're a baby. To this day, I say. Who's the two people you have to believe in? And they say, and it's, you know, they said, myself and God. I said, that's it. Because all you need is God and yourself. And you don't need nobody else. But I believe in you too. Mom believes in you. But you don't need that. You only need God and yourself to believe in you. And to this day, they always talk about that. This is the truth. You try to teach your players that. <laughs> look, yeah. it don't matter what the guy, you're going to get, everyone, they're called critics and for a reason. They're called, paid to criticize. You got to understand. <laughs> You gotta be built for that. But you know what I mean, Sean? I'm sure you realize. You know how many guys, fighters I know, that got thin skin. You make a comment, they want to fight. Right. I said, yo, bro, you're supposed to be fighting for a world title. You ain't got, I said, you ain't gonna make it if you don't get it here. Yeah. You're too thin skin, man. That's... What do you give a shit what I say? What's right. the matter what I say to you? It doesn't matter what I say. It's my opinion. Whether you agree with it or not, who cares? You don't, if you believe enough in you, it don't matter what I say. Relax with that. And all these athletes now are so thin skin. Mm. You make a comment, and they go, oh, ah, shut the, shut right. the hell up. Right. Do a ball. Just go ball out and prove me wrong. Yeah. Until then, shut up. That, that is uh, so I good. Know, I would tell people, you always hear about show and tell, right? When we were kids, show and tell. I, I said, I'm still about show and tell. Yo, don't tell. Mm. I'm about, it is the, the, the adult version of show and tell. Show, don't tell. Shut the hell up. Just show me. Don't tell me. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> you are first of all, you're an inspiration to me. I, I, I played college sports and I played football and basketball and baseball in high school. I'm five six on a really tall day. So the one thing my dad always said to me, he, you know, people always talk. You know, you, I'm sure you heard the words, terms, midget, tiny, all that stuff. I had one guy tell me when I was on second base one day. He goes, "Hey, get those shoes and hat off the field so they don't trip anybody up." Because I was the littlest guy on a team. But my dad always said, he's like, don't ever let anybody give you that. You know, they talk about the Napoleon complex. And he's like, if you have that, that's a sign of weakness. That, that's a sign that you, you, you're you believing what those people are saying to you. Don't ever let them think that. Don't don't ever even, your height has nothing to do with, like you said, your heart and your and your head. Right? And desire. Heart and desire is all you need. That's why now, Sean, in every sport, they go, you have a lot coming run down the first baseline, this is that. You know, my, my father was five foot two. Five foot two. Wow. wow. But he was this wide. But let me tell you something. He walked in the room, you thought he was 10 foot tall. Mm -hmm. My father was the biggest that because he carried himself big. My father five foot two and he never and he was like the he was he was the toughest guy I knew. Mentally, emotionally, he, depression, baby, but he fighting since he was on the streets since he was 10. You know, and he went to you know the three C camps at 15. You know, and, and fighting, he was fighting cowboys out there at 15, fighting them, you know, that as in pro. I mean, it's just unbelievable the life he led. Five foot two, but he was this wide, and he, believe me, he walked in, carried himself like he was 10 foot tall. And that's where I learned that. 
Ray, can you stay there for a second? Because yes. I know your dad, Lenny, was a big part of, of yeah. your life. <clears throat> and he was a fighter, too. He was a, he was a fighter, um, you know, back in the day. And then he ended up going to World War II, and some things happened coming back. Two things. Can you talk about some of the greatest, like, lessons that, Len, that your dad taught right. you? But also your mom. I know your mom was a big inspiration to you, too, and I know she yeah. believed in you big time. Can you talk about the relationship and what yeah. that made you move in that and when, when you went on to become champion? Well, you just said my father, everyone, most people know my father's not only my inspiration, but I would say father is my, my inspiration. He's everything I want to be as a man, as a father, as a fighter. But my mother was my motivation. I'll tell you what I mean by that. My father was everything I want to be as a man. He said, you know, like I said, <laughs> He's who I wanted to be because I was hurt by the, I was, should have been, could have been, would have been world champion if it wasn't for World War II. He was the number one contender in the world from 1942 to 1944. He signed a fight for the world title in Jan, uh, February of 1942, got drafted in January of 42. Oh. And he said, all I want is a chance to fight for the title. I'll go into the army right after that and I'll give all my money to the army, which at that time was crying for money. They said, we don't want your money, we want you. Consequently, he went in service, and then he was a frontline infantryman. He, and he was a frontline infantryman on you know, your enemy, nobody in between. And he, he got shot up in the Battle of Metz. Other than the Battle of the Bulge, the Battle of Metz was the most destructive war in the European theater of operation. He was basically left for dead, basically. And one of his comrades picked him up, carried him to camp, and they said, well, you lost so much blood, you'll never make it. Got through that. They said, well, certainly, He'll never walk again. He has so much shrapnel throughout his body. And he eventually got that. And he said, well, certainly he'll never fight again. And he came back to fight. My father went in the number one lightweight contender. Who, uh, but he came out to a middleweight. And he went up to 190 pounds. 105 for 290 pounds. Wow. And, and, and his trainer, to a rare cell, the greatest rebel, who's my father's trainer, said, you get down to 160, I'll train you again. <laughs> Come back to New York again. But he was a shell of what he once was. But you know, and he still fought a lot of top guys. The last two fights were getting Rocky uh, Castellani, who wound up going fighting for the middleweight title. He lost two decisions to them. But here's what I tell people. My father, on record, he had, his record was 55, 12, and 3, on record. But he had 20 some fights before he went to New York. They never kept record. He fought around Ohio, Youngstown, Cleveland area. <laughs> they never kept records to go to Cleveland. And he couldn't get no fights here. So eventually, uh, he, he went on, and Ray Arcel wound up training him. And Ray Arcel is considered the greatest trainer of all time, of course. And, but the thing is, I tell people, my father had close to 100 fights, if not over 100 fights. The one thing I'm most proud of is was never knocked out or stopped, ever, as a, wow. at any of his career, as an amateur or a pro. Now, you have to understand, he fought some of the biggest, greatest fighters in the world. Jump top contender beat top contender Billy uh, to, uh, Dave Castle in Montreal. Who Dave Castle was from Montreal. Fought him in Montreal and beat him to become the number one contender. Fought the big punchers. He fought Sam Angott, the former lightweight champ. Which he lost. Most people thought he won the fight. He, got, he lost a split decision, but it was such an outrage that got him the rematch, which is when he was going to fight Angott for the rematch for the title. He fought Walter Waits. He fought after the war. He fought middleweights, and none of them ever knocked him out or stopped him. Could never do that. That's how impressive that is. I don't really know if two other fighters of that era, wow. Pete Debbie Lawn and Billy Graham, never knocked out or stopped. There might be more, and I'm sure there are, but I don't know. But I'm talking about as a, as, as a top contender, top middle, you know, and then fight two weight classes. Now, guys, they're talking about if you move up uh, uh, five pounds, you know, from a lightweight to a junior welterweight, oh, my God, is it? They moved up 10, 12, 15, 20 pounds, two weight classes. It's just incredible that era, that era, you know. Hey, hey Ray, Ray, you talk, you talk about, <clears throat> I mean, the guys nowadays that are fighting and the way you fought and the way your dad fought. You know, talk about wow, a hundred bouts or something ridiculous like that. It seems like the guys don't fight as much nowadays. Oh. Is, is that is you know is that uh, what what do you think about that? Son, son, these guys that I'm, the, the quote I make is they get paid a hell of a lot more, you do a hell of a lot less, and I'm sure you could say that in your sport. Because huh. every sport, this you know, the average when you were fighting, when you were playing, 
And what, you're, what the average salary is now. And what these guys do, you knew the guy to come in, right? I remember playing, you know, growing up as a Yankee fan my whole life, growing up, and not a Cleveland fan. And unfortunately, I was not a Pittsburgh, but I did love to play. I, was, I got to be good friends with Chuck Tanner. I was yes. Nice, and I used to go down and see the, you know, pop stars, Joe, and the Cobra, you know, Dave, yes. Dave Parker, and Manny Sankey, and, and all the guys, you know, I used to love watching them play. And, uh, but, you know, the guys, when I grew up, the baseball players, you know, they, again, you, you get out of control. All you need is a guy to come in and throw two innings. Setup guy, right? He's making three million a year. Right. And whatever. And these guys, the average, <laughs> Willie Mays, his whole entire never, never averaged three million a year. For his whole entire career. Mickey Mantle, you know, and, and this is the, the, what Bob was about. Now, we know that's sports. You know? But <laughs> you think about the guys that, you get you got setup guys down, right? Then you got the short reliever, then you got the long reliever. You got a guy like Mo Rivera coming in for one inning, making ten million. Years. But he does his job. He's the greatest, probably, of what he did, right? Throwing throw, throw ninety plus, and this is why. I, look, and now that I'm going off on tangents, so you have to bear with me because I'll bring it back it's around. Great. That way about, Keep going. Well, Everything I, you're doing I, is I great. I love you talking baseball. I want to hear that. Yeah, I just literally texted Sean. I'm like, this is awesome. So keep going, sir. They talk to PEDs. Their sport, right? That's unfortunate, but I tell people, and I'm going to tell you a story. And this is what it is. If you got, if it's the mid, if it's the dog days of August, and you got a guy who's fighting, playing, now he's got a, you know, maybe they're not going to play the playoffs. He's got another month to go. See if he gets his contract year. Maybe it's up for his contract year. And you got to, you got to face these guys like Mo Rivera for one inning. And you got to, what I do, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would, because now, nah. reason I said is, I asked Willie Mays once. I was at an event with Willie Mays during the height of this in Atlantic City. Porter said to Willie, "Would you have done that? You know, would you have done that PDs? And you know, if you're and he and Willie said, "Well, I guess if everyone else was, I would have too." That's the answer. Doesn't matter right or they're trying to say right or wrong. Bullshit. They don't make you look. If you hit, if I hit the ball. 325 or three or 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 three 425 I, yeah you know, four twenty. what's the difference it's uh, no home run right the point being is if i needed that extra to help me, who knows we don't know i'm not I'm not gonna get now they call them cheaters bullshit man stuff if, if a guy's gonna make uh, if it's if it's a guy's making x amount and he's got to fight for his is, is, is like i said his years up and he's waiting for to get another contract his contract years up now there's some of these other guys who did it, needed it. I don't know. I think Alex Rodriguez was a pretty damn good player before he did it. <laughs> right. So and so was Bobby Bonds. Well, I don't well know. it's like uh, Ray, Ray. It's like it's like guys are. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I kind of I played in that era. I mean, guys are looking for edges, you know. I and and to each his own. I mean, I don't know. Like it, guys did it, you know. Hey, listen. They also also too like. You know, back in the the red juice was big back in the day. Amphetamines was big at at, yeah, at, exactly. at times. So like, just, you know, it's like what sin's worse than another sin? You know, right. obviously, I think the biggest thing with steroids and and you know during baseball that time was that it made you feel like it was the first day of spring training. You know, the first the only time you're healthy is the first day of spring training. Shut I think you, the recovery for these that's guys exactly is a lot better. The recovery because you're playing all- 162 in 180 days, like. Guys did it, and that, that's the bottom line. And guess what? There was no testing for it in Major League Baseball at the time. It's just – it's it's a crazy you – know, obviously, it's a crazy topic. There's so many different views on it, but at the end of the day – And you know, the guys making the biggest topics are guys who never played the freaking game. That's what right. gets me, man. Play the dog days of summer. But 160 bucks, 62? Are you shitting me? Right. Well, that, your body gets tired, man. You know better. I'm not telling you to do it. No. That's what you need to acquire. But I'm trying to tell people – those things didn't help you to hit the ball. It didn't help head eye coordination. It helped you jack to the few more feet. Right. right. That's the Bonds is, argument. Is a recovery like, period. Great if I look, they said people doing fighting. It didn't help you in fighting. Fighters that need to get jacked up. We need to have long slender muscles. We need to fight every day. We fight. So <laughs> what wouldn't help me? You, you can you prepare for fifteen rounds because your body can do it or you can't. It don't, tell, it don't help this. It don't help this. Your heart. So, but if I'm in a sport, look, in the 70s, how many guys were on Coke? Get yeah. that, for the case. that was a big thing. They were up on Coke. Everybody. The Yankees, man, them guys were, they were, they were you know. Steve Howe. 
But that's not, but the, again, does it help you hit the ball? I don't think so. It just helps you see the ball. You know, if I can, people guy says, well, it helps you get around on the ball faster. Right. How much faster? You, you well, well, if, if it did, every bodybuilder would be in the big leagues. That's you know what exactly I mean? right. <laughs> Great I'm, point, Sean. I'm sick and tired of now we've got these guys who are on these boards, you know, like amateur athletics, the most Ku Klux organization you ever want to call it, right? Because they they, 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 they pick, you know, these recruits, you buy them a ham sandwich, and they want to take away a scholarship. You know? Yeah. Are you kidding me? So now they changed that, obviously. They had to do that, right? But how many guys they hurt by not doing that, right? So the same thing with the, with the baseball. <laughs> Look, back in the day, Gaylord Perry had the spinner. Whatever he did with it, that dropped the ball 10 feet yeah. before the play, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, ten, uh, you know, Burt Blythe Levin did it. You know, Kent Tocovi had that ball going somewhere. I don't know where the hell it went. Yeah. That started our motion. I don't know, man. If you can, if you can get an edge on your opponent, you do it. What, 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 what was what? What, what in boxing was like an edge? You know, I know you guys talk about, hey, your gloves are, are a little different. Uh, hey, he's got the, the Vaseline on. Wait, what, what, what's an edge when you're in a boxing match? Like, hey, that guy's cheating or that guy's trying to get yeah. an edge. Sean, you just said, right. I don't think there is much. I just <clears> said, you, you could punt, like, you know the old saying, the guys before the fight, the guy sitting with the across the corner, he goes, that help him? I go, if you can't, if you can't fight it, like it don't be nothing. <laughs> don't be shit. You know, if you can't fight, it don't be nothing. Right? But then, so, if you can't punch and keep a guy off you, what does it mean? It don't mean nothing. You got to be able to look. The, the pro game is a hurting game. You got to be able to hurt people in the pro game. So it, it don't matter for uh, you know if, if you know what these guys do. So if you take, you know, there's no performance enhancing now. That, now, now lately they 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 put these guys take whatever steroids to help them recover. You said recover faster. Sure. Well, I used to sleep a couple hours during the day. Okay, that's <laughs> you know. So I, I don't know. In the fight game, I really don't see it helping you. Either you could fight or you can't. You could take a punch or you can't. And you could, you know, either you have the punching power or you don't. I, I don't yeah. think it helps in boxing. Right. Other sports, I could see it. I could see it. You know, football players now. These guys are jacked. When, when I was growing up, having a guy that was three hundred was so far out of norm. Right. Now. It's an everyday thing, right? High school players are 300 plus. So, it, what does that mean? What does it mean? You know, it's just, it's just sports is getting bigger, faster, stronger. You, when I was growing up, Cleveland Browns, Ian Hickerson was was that you know, you know the right guard was you know six four two fifty. Now Cam Newton six six two fifty. <laughs> yeah. And runs yeah, and runs faster than a running back. Runs faster than a five foot four inch guy. Like we used to be the fast guys. Now that guy's running faster than you. <laughs> John, you see guys motor down first baseline, oh. that that ninety feet, right? So, so who's the fastest guy? Mickey Rivers. I got to know Mickey Rivers a little bit. Who's the fastest guy I saw down that first baseline? Deion Deion Sanders, fastest guy I've ever seen there in the go. baseball uniform. <clears throat> I played with him in two thousand one. He hit a ball left center spring training. Ray, I, I was like. I would have been diving into second. It would have been a play at second. Right. He was on standing on third. I was like, geez, that's, that's unbelievable. Like, you know, that's right. that's some right. of these guys are unbelievable. This, Ray, you talk okay. about, you know, you talk about, like, I love <clears throat> talking about the game and about, you know, <clears throat> guys' talents and everything like that. But you and I both know, as we talked before, that at the end of the day, if I got the mental bullets and the, and the, and the belief in myself, I'm going to go a long way. But that's along right. with along with that, you know, there's so much to do with discipline. Like, uh, do you yes. show up every day yes. to work? Do you yes. eat right? Do you sleep well? Are you thinking right? Do you work on the <laughs> mental side of the game, right? So the discipline of that daily, the hard work of that daily, the mental toughness of that daily. But I, I used to say, like, <clears throat> I'd go hitting by myself in the batting cages. You know, in college, and high school, I'd be up there. <clears throat> I'd listen to two albums, the Pearl Jam 10 album, ACDC Back in Black. And I'd listen to him over and over, and people would say, man, you go up there to hit, your swing's looking good. I said, you know what? Not only am I working on my swing, I'm working on my confidence. Because when right. I'm in there by myself for two hours taking those rips, when I show up at practice tomorrow or I show up at the game, guess what, brother? I know that yeah. I've, put the, I've paid the price and put in the work. So my, ment <clears throat> my me mentality against a guy that's on the mound, like – I used to tell people, like, don't respect anyone on the mound. That's just how I thought. Like, it's a one-on-one right, wrestling right. match. That's what I thought. And, like, 
But the time that I put in by myself with the discipline, I think that was the biggest thing. You were one of the most disciplined fighters ever. And I think that's why you succeeded the way you succeeded with the flash and the power that you said. Can you talk about that? What discipline meant to you to become the champion, the, the world champion? Well, Sean, you just said it. I appreciate you saying that. I said, discipline is just what you said. It's, it's not doing things with us. It's doing things with nobody's watching. Right. Look, people, a reporter said to me once, he said, every, you know, I was recognized as the hardest working champion. I want that now. I'll tell, I'll tell another funny story. They just <laughs> recognized me, me and Marvin Hagler. They said, you and Marvin Hagler are the two hardest working champions. Go, really? He goes, yeah. I go, why? What do you mean? I know I have to be, but why him? He's great, man. You know what? But, but but you know what? <laughs> a guy told me once, and I told him, he said, Marvin used to ask us, what do you do? What mm. you did? Marvin used to inquire about what you did because he wanted to do the things you did. He knew how hard you were. I was so honored by that. I was so flattered by that. Trust me. <laughs> I hear what I tell people. I tell people that when I, a reporter once asked me, you know, people say you're out there doing road work, but it's blizzard snow. Torrential rain, scorching heat. And they go, yeah. they go, why? I said, because I know the other guy ain't. <laughs> and if he is, he better be. Yeah. Just to say that. So that's the time you tell me. Those are times. Now, I never ran with headphones. Now everyone runs with headphones. I, mean, I used to like to hear the sound of my own breath. I used to <laughs> like to hear my feet on the pavement. <laughs> because when you're in the ring, that's what you're thinking about. You're, you're, it's the sound of your own breath. It's you. And I used to talk to myself. You know, talk to myself. When you're going to the miles, you're going up them the hills. You know, you're going through the mountains. You know, and the Casco Mountains. Stuff, or, or when I used to train out in the desert. And you're going through the sand dunes. When you're running that sand, you're, you feel like you're, like, digging. You, you ain't know nowhere. That's what tell me. I'm in the later rounds. Later rounds. I'm the champ. You know, you talk to yourself. You talk yourself through it. Because when you get there, now, Sean, I'm sure you've heard, you've heard this. You guys have heard this, right? Sports psychologists have a fancy name. It's called positive mental visualization. Yes. Right? But you could dream it, you could be it, right? I said, hell, man, I always thought it was called dreaming. Because <laughs> that's all it is. You see yourself be where you want to be. You put you, in your mind, you go through every situation. I said, see myself getting knocked down. How I would recover getting up, how I respond. Uh, I see myself knocking the other guy down, him getting up, how I'd respond. Go through every scenario in your mind. And now that's what I tell you. Positive mental visualization. What they call that? Mindfulness. Right, right. Mindfulness. Right, 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 right. I said, no, oh, man, I, I'm being in the moment. Ain't that being in the moment? That's all yes. that. <laughs> you know? yeah. So this is things that we learn. But that's what you're talking about, Sean. When you're in the gym and nobody's seen the thing, you're getting up at six in the morning. Be getting up at six in the morning right. doing that. Because I used to do it before I used to go to high school. Before high school, I get up at six, go do real work. My father would get me up. My father would get me up, give me a kiss, wake me up. And I we have two houses from the corner. And I'd watch him. I'd look at the window. And I'd watch him walk to the corner to get this right. Blizzard, snow, pouring rain, like I just said. And I'd sit there going, God. Please help me to make it as a fighter. I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> better men than me. My neighbor, all my neighbor, my father, better men than me. Because I couldn't do that. I wanted to, please help me make it as a fighter. That's the truth. That's the God's truth. Because <laughs> I, I didn't want to do that. And I'm not for still workers, man. The guys are good. I tell people, what I did, what you did, Sean, no, man. Yeah. I'm not a hero. No. You were the heroes or the everyday guy who gets up after we feed a mm-hmm. wife and three kids on minimum wage. Big grinding it out every day, getting up to do that shit. That's yeah. the hero. That's yes. so true. I, I got one quick thing. Every shit. I don't mean to disregard their, their livelihood. It's anything bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm no. sorry. I didn't mean to say No, that. not at all. You're not I mean, saying. No. Totally you understood. Do the grind every day. Doing the grind is what I meant. Every yes. Day. Yeah. That's admirable. I, I have a question for, for both of you guys because you're talking about the. the so we just went through, you know, the physicality of it and the preparation and everything. And Sean tells this amazing story. It's one of my favorite stories that he has is when he's in a World Series. So he's had all that preparation. But now the whole world is watching. And in boxing ring, the whole world is watching you. There's only two guys. Now, he tells a story about he's up at the plate and he looks up. I mean, you could probably explain it better, Sean. But he needed to step away and go, I need to take a breath and slow things down. Which yeah. is an amazing thing because you guys physically 
emotionally have to ramp up to be as great as you were as athletes. But then when you get in the moment, you have to slow it down. So how do you walk into a ring? There's, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's I still alone. There's a billion people. There's a billion women looking at you. There's, there's the whole world is watching your night. How do you separate yourself from that as an well, athlete? It's funny, you, it's, it's funny you said that, you know, and we always talk about team sports and said, you know, you got another guy, except for baseball, when you're up there by yourself, it's yeah. It's one-on-one. You look one on one. like the jerk off, or you look like you know, <laughs> an hero, right? And it's, it's, the, it's, it's the ultimate individual team sport, baseball. Yes, right. you know? It is. <laughs> it is ultimate, that's a good way of saying it. And I always tell people, I used to tell myself in the locker room, you know, I prepared. I know how hard I prepared, so I know I was physical ready. Mentally, right, emotionally, spiritually, you got to prepare yourself every which way, right? You go in there and tell yourself, you, you know, look, doubt creeps in all the time. Yeah. That's that double. You got to train them because doubt's going to always can creep in. What if? What if? Yeah. And you got to flush it out. It's like the toilet. You flush the toilet, flush it out. If you let it stay there too long, it starts to stink up pretty good. And it'll make your, it'll, it'll, it'll stink up your brain and, and everything. You got to flush it out. But it happens in the shuttle will tell you. But, the fighter, so when I was just to walk that rock ring, so folks, you talk about, yeah, people, all the people there, I couldn't tell you who was there. And I always tell people, you guys are looking about the pretty girls in the audience, see that pretty girl in the audience, all the, all the girls in there, right? Get dropped on your ass. You know that? <laughs> Where you at now? Where <laughs> yeah. you at now? <laughs> you get up, you look over, and then with the next guy, got his arm around. <laughs> yes. you know, that's all bully cock anyway. <laughs> what I'm saying, I tell myself, my night, my night. Did I, I try, you, mentally, you just walk into the room, you're talking to yourself. My night, I'm the champ, I'm the champ. <clears throat> I paid the dues. I, my night. You know, you just tell yourself, when you get in there, but let's like, just slow it down. That's what the, the, the positive mental visualization is all about. So I did that. Because every night in training camp, I went through every scenario in my mind. Now, anything that happens, I'm prepared for it. So I could calm down. And when I get, you know, get in the ring, I'm ready to go. Because look, when the bell rings, it doesn't matter what you said, you know, I'm going to be in your face all night long. Yeah. That was my stop. So right. I, I prepare myself for that. Can you talk about that calmness? Because as a hitting coach, when I get my, you know, if, 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 whether it's my sons or their teams or their kids, I try to, you know, when I see a guy grab the bat and they're like, and their knuckles are, you know, are turning red, I'm like, hey, man, I was like, tension's poison. Yeah. Like That's you gotta right. relax. That's and right. So, and, and so now, listen. I'm not a fighter, obviously. No, no, no. Same. Same. But I, but I would say I would say to guys, watch a boxer. When a boxer fights, he's moving. He's like, uh, bam. He's gonna he's gonna hit you with a jab. Like you're not gonna know what hit you. But boxers aren't up there all stiff and ready to go because it's not explosive. I said when you get relaxed and calm, it's explosive. Can you talk about that throwing a punch, being in a big fight, like like that that calmness you just talked right. about. Well, it's, well, it's funny you say that, Sean, because one of the things I talk about, I talk to fighters, uh, and people talk, how do you get you know, that punch? I said, it's like a baseball player. It's the torque in the hips. I said, it's the hips, man. Everything's in the hips. You punch, it's in the hips and the shoulder. Boom. Shoulder in the hips. When you got to bat that torque, you know, when you, when, like Tommy Ernst was this big. You know, Tommy Ernst didn't knock nobody out in the amateur. He turned around and he's knocking everybody out. Why? Manny stood out, taught him how to sit down and his punches down. That, at the end of the punch, right? So you know better than me. You make that swing. It's that. It's the wrist. It's all that wrist. That yes. last. Boom. That Ooh. snap. That snap. So right. So you know you, you know you snap that at the boom. You did. You go, oh sh. Yeah. Look at how far that ball. You <laughs> just you contact. Same thing with the fighter. You ain't check. You know. Oh. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And that was so fast just now. By the way, what he just did was <laughs> so fast, Sean. That was awesome. But it's <laughs> but it's, 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 it's it's the same thing. So you you got to have that fluidity because you got to be able to, and that's what you know you, you do it in training as as my as muscle memory. You shadow box, you shadow box, you shadow box. You're seeing you're you're seeing the guy in front of you. You're letting your punches flow. Well, when you're in the ring, you train as hard as you can train. You don't need to tighten up. This is my night. I trained for this, you know. <laughs> and so now you gotta let the punches flow. Let the punches flow. You can't tighten up. You know, and most guys like they get hit. Oh, it gets you know that it gets you right. In the not, that's you know that's, you know it's on, right? Yeah. But I don't wait to want to get hit. I jump right on you. I'm coming at you. Yeah. 
start throwing punches and you know it's on and and, and this is why I, I tell people look the, the idea you know, the, nobody wants to get hit but it's, you're, you're gonna get hit it's inevitable that's part of your game it's part of the deal right you're gonna get hit <laughs> how you grab it so when you're when you're relaxed you're able to run with the punches you're able to you know, make moves you're tight you know you're gonna fall like a tree sitting in baseball you you can't swing a bat you know you're tennis you gotta let the ball be fluid right you know yeah. I mean, like, look at Henry Aaron had those, one of the sweetest, sweet, easiest swings ever. Oh. And I never said how this guy hit, you know, he never hit more than 50 home runs in a season. He never hit 40, 40, 38, 44, 38, 40, 42. It was consistency. It was the key to him, right? Yeah. Safety in boxing. <laughs> I want to be consistent pressure on top of it. Attack that body consistently because I'm going to break you down systematically. Right, I'm gonna break you down as we go. Now, if I, if I get you in the later round, if I catch you early, great. But if we get you in the later rounds, I feel like I've broken you down. Where did that style come from, Ray? Because you listen, the re I, I almost feel like pay per view. Thank you, Ray Mancini. Like, you know, like, like seriously, like CBS, all those networks are saying, man, Ray Mancini's style is when that bell rings, he's on you, he's coming for you, he's, he's throwing punch, punch after punch after punch. Where did that style come from? Who taught you that style? Who taught you that mentality? I, I, I nobody taught me the style, Sean. It was my father's style. And I, as I said earlier, I wanted my father, so I tried to emulate him. I didn't never saw no tapes. There's no tapes of my father. There's, there were no tapes back then. But I used to hear people talk about him. Mm. And when he'd show me how to throw punches, that's how he told me. He would always keep coming. He always read the story how my father kept coming, kept coming, never took it back. My father said to me, Raymond, I never took a backward step. Sometimes I wish I did. Sometimes I wish I did. My father, you know, that's what he said. He never took a backward step. You know, fights of the white Henry Armstrong. They said, they said my father loved Henry Armstrong. But my father just, it was a, it's a natural thing. Sean, you know it as well as I do. You got it inside or you yeah. don't. You can't build that. You can't make that. People, like I said, fighters are born. They're not made. Hmm. The athletes, you can build up athletes. You can make out of that. But you fighters are born, not made. Either you're born with the fighting spirit or you're not. Either you got the fighting heart or you don't. Either you got the chin or you don't. My father said two things it takes. A lot of good chin and a lot of heart. One of them go, with, go without the other. You gotta have a good chin and no heart, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you have no chin and a lot of heart, you catch a lot of ass whippings. <laughs> That's true. You, know, you keep coming, but you can't punch it. You know. Oh. How, how do you, how do you, can you train a good chin? Like, no. I'm yeah. just, like no, I'm saying like, like no. do you take a million punches and go, hey, my chin's better than yours? Or like, great right question. It's just it's good that you train neck muscles. Yeah, we just do neck exercise. But bottom line is no. You can train your neck muscles to absorb punches better. You can take, but you can take a shot or you cannot take a shot. You know, right. I tell people, you can hit here, but sometimes you can hit in the temporal lobe. Those guys that mess up are good. What, I'm sorry, What can you tell us, I thank God we have you here. You're one of our favorites and one of the greatest of all time. Thank you. I, I would like to ask this question because I've never heard this answer. What yeah. happens, you get hit right here, and yeah. the next thing you know, you are right. on the ground and you're right. looking up. Can, right. can you tell us yeah. what that's like? <laughs> Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Tell about that. There's certain, there's certain pressure points where you hit a guy's get up, you go. One of them's here. It's, it's, it's the pressure point, the, the chin. Uh. Hit me the cerebral ball. Boom, here. You get hit a guy on the chin, he ain't going nowhere. You hit him here, he's going to drop. Right, at the, right up here, right there, right? Got right it. There. there. You hit him in the temple, he's gone, right? Just, it's good to that, right? So there's some there. You hit a guy underneath the heart or liver or kidney he's going down <laughs> he's got under, body shot yeah. here's the point but on the chin it's here or it's here the temple now here's a punch that's messed up for long term guys get hit on top of the head like Deontay Wilder got hit by Tyson Fury uh -huh. yes that yes screws you up for like those ones those are the ones memory banks your your speech and you know, all that because those are the punches one well, year guys they have extensive careers. You know, and you start hearing them slur speech stuff because they've gotten on top of hit on top of the head. So it starts knocking out memory banks. It's not stop the slur speech, our, our 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 cognitive areas. Those are that's why guys can't remember. Mm. That's 
that stuff to mess you up long term. Wow. And then, you know, you get energy now and you go, yeah. it's temporary. And so is there like an unwritten rule that you really don't, you know, obviously no, you're moving I mean, around. You know, but the guys that would get hit, you're going to hit him on top of the head, right? Yeah. You're going to hit the guy on top of the head, you're going to hit him. And the brain, and look, I can talk that way now because I like to think I'm, you know, I'm so far removed from it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like to sound like I'm educated. I'm an educated person. <laughs> <You're- laughs> <laughs> you know, but you're young, but, but meaning... The brain ain't made to get hit like that. Mm. You know, we ain't meant, you know, <laughs> that type of my father taught me. Now, here's the thing. Going back to my father said to me, things you said to me, you asked earlier. My father always tell me, Raymond, always remember. One day the headline, the next day the bread line. <laughs> same people calling, same people calling you Great. champ on the way in, it'll be calling you bum on the way out. <laughs> Don't ever take this serious. What he meant was fame. Don't ever take fame serious. He said, right? And he always said, always, and it's always remembers a small fall from that's a God's truth. Figuratively and literally, right? <laughs> and, and you know, so, but I always remember, you know, I did a headline, next day the bread line. I tell people that all the time. That's great. Because it's the truth, man. You know, and so. Well, yeah, one day you're a hero, next day you're zero, right? One day you're a hero, next day you're zero. zero. That's the truth, The right? way it goes. That's it. So, and he used to tell me, you know, say, you know, <laughs> people, you know, but he's always telling me, you got to be tough here. Don't worry about what people say. He says, remember, people can't remember today what they read yesterday. Because mm. you always know what's in the paper. And it's the truth. Mm. It's the truth. They can, you know, I can't remember whatever, you know. So things he said, you know. But I say, what he used to, things that he tell me. One day the headline, next day the bread line. You know, and, and you can't, you can't, he said, you can't teach you got heart. You can't teach you got heart. Either you have it or you don't. So these are the things that I think like- God I got from my father. Oh, right. to my children. When you talk about your father and all the lessons, you know, and I go back and look at your, you know, I go back and look at your career, uh, how awesome it was. Th- one of the fights that, you know, j- just popped up every time I was doing my re- research on it was the Alexis Arguello fight. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, what he was like, I think he was 71 and 4 or 53 yeah, and 4 yeah. at the time. Something, yeah. something, something, something right, no, 71 and 4. 71 and 4, man. That's, that's ridiculous. Jesus. Yeah. So I, I, my question, you know, coming into that was you're fighting for the title, right? Yeah. Are, and w- 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 what was your thought process? Like, what was your process mentally going in the Arguello fight? Well, it's funny you say that, Sean, because first of all, it's 15 round fights. But why the true championship distance, I'll say to this day, 15 round fights, not 12. Right. That's a TV decision, not a medical decision or any other. Yes. Don't get you there. TV says, you know, we don't understand that. Yeah. Lexus was started three time world champion, three different weight classes. One of the greatest of all time. He's one of the greatest 50 fighters of all time, one of the top 10 Latino fighters of all time. We know that. I used to be one of my heroes. I remember when he knocked out Olivares in the Federal title in 76. I remember when he beat Escalera for the, for the uh, junior lightweight, a junior lightweight championship in 78, knocked him out in Puerto Rico. I remember when he beat, and I saw Jim, when he beat Jim Watt for the lightweight title over in uh, Scotland. I love Alexis. And we became friends later on, we became great friends. But when you the opportunity to fight him, to be the best, you want to fight the best. Yeah. You got to beat the best. I, obviously, they saw, when I hear people say I was too soon, I said, are you stupid or what? If I was too soon, <laughs> if I wasn't regular, re- ready, was, I'd have been knocked out in less than five rounds. Because the fight after ours, he knocked out a guy in four rounds, who was the guy who was a national amateur champion, you had over 50 fights, but he knocked him out four rounds. Stupid ass, don't understand <laughs> what, it's much, what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I was ready. I was ready. I beat the number six contender in the world. I just beat the number three contender in the world. Where are you supposed to go when they give you the opportunity? No, 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 I don't want it. I'll wait. <laughs> I, I don't understand. If you want to be great, you challenge greatness. As I tell people all the time when I do a speech, to be great, you've got to challenge greatness. Greatness ain't coming to you. Yeah. You guys that want to be great. How's that happen? you got to go take it. It ain't coming to you. And you challenge greatness. To challenge greatness, you got to, to be great, you got to challenge greatness. So that fight, took, I said, yeah. And I really felt that I was catching him at the right time. I didn't think he looked too impressive against Jim Watt. But in retrospect, nobody looks impressive against Jim Watt. Jim Watt, <laughs> you know, one of the guys, the South Pod, he, he ain't going to look good against him, right? But I thought I was catching him at the right time. 
Plus, I thought I was stronger than Alexis. He thought he'd be stronger than me. And not that he was, but he, I was able to push him back. But, man, can he punch, you know? And, I, you know, and, and, and the thing about Alexis is, I know now, Alexis is one, one of those guys, he'll, he'll try to take you in the later, you know, he'll try to take you in the later rounds. He sets traps early in the fight. Mm. He'll go back later in the fight, see if there's traps caught. So, you know what so what, what do you mean? What do you mean he sets traps? Like, what, what does that he'll mean? He'll do things. He'll give. He'll do things. Maybe <laughs> set up like he'll drop his jab. They could let you think, oh, you could get a right hand over the top. He'll set that set up because he wants you to leave with that jab right in. He leans back, catches you with a hook. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll drop the left jab. He'll he'll he'll, he'll, he'll allow you to sleep with the jab. He wants the right hand. Allow you to sleep with the jab. Drop yours and he step with the right hand. <laughs> I've seen Alexis win fights. Other fights, when he would throw a jab, he would throw a right hand the whole, the whole round. It was just left hand, left jab, jab, hook off the jab. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and then you lost your sleep thing, well, and then boom, he's the opening. But Lex is, that's what makes him great. Because you had it. You had that, like, like Ray. They, had him, they, say, they say you had him beat the first 12 rounds. If it was a 12 that's round it. fight, you're the new champ. Have, and yeah. they say in, in 14, in 14, all of a sudden it was like, yeah, that trap, well, yeah, he caught you with with. Some- well, he caught me actually. I come at the end of twelve. At the end of twelve. In the twelve. But if it's a shot, if it's twelve round fight, like you said, you fight differently the last round. Yeah. If I would be fighting differently, right? If it's twelve rounds, I'm undefeated because I was still I winning on two or three cards. The other one was it was it was even, <laughs> so I won two or three cards. I was still winning. But that's the difference, and I tell people, thirteenth round. Yeah, I got to the fourth round. I jumped right on him. If you watch the beginning of the fourth round, I'm backing him up, backing him up, catching him. But he's keeping his composure and shutting mm. out his. Mm. I tell you, the one thing an athlete, the most important thing is keep your composure. Lose your composure, you lose after. If you get ragged, you lose your composure. You, 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 that's it. You're over. It's over. Yeah. Keep his composure. And, and then he caught me with a left hook, done me, coming to the left hook, and hit me with the right hand and dropped me. I got up, I was hurt. And Tony Perez, the referee, he stopped it, rightfully so. Um, you know, I wanted to go on. I got up, you know, but I was hurt. But what I tell you, if I was around, we got blown out one or two rounds. I went 14 rounds, was the greatest powerful bomb fighter at that time. And that let me know I'd be world champion. I knew after I'd be world champion. I knew it. I, and um, I, it just taught me, it taught me what, the, what you know, taught me that experience, there's no greater teacher than experience. And Sean, you know it better than being up yes. there against a certain type of pitcher or a certain opponent. And and I tell people, there's no, there's no, look, I always tell people, I use quotes all the time. Um, Benjamin Franklin, I mean, Einstein. Einstein can be considered by many the greatest, greatest mind of all time, right? Einstein was once asked, of all your teachers, who's your greatest teacher? He said, experience has been my greatest teacher. Mm. And that's life in general. That's yeah. in life, right? Yeah. So, I always tell I tell my kids it all the time. You can't teach experience. No. You got to go out and experience. I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you everything because I'm trying to save you from some things. Right. But at right. the end of the day, you got to you got to go out there and, and experience it yourself. There, there's the Mike Tyson line right here. One of my favorite lines that Tyson always said. He goes, "Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face." <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. That's true. Everybody, that's that thing. What that's what it is in boxing. What's your fight plan? We ain't playing football. I know what I want to do, but the first punch may change all that. <laughs> I have pre- my, my, my style. I'm going to pressure. I'm jumping right out on. What, my, group, my trainer, Murphy Griffith, did things, right? Boxing is pretty basic. Either you're moving forward or moving backwards. Either you're punching or you're, or, or you're, making, or you're, you're blocking punches. And so, you know, so you're on offense or you're on the defense. My, I chose to be on the offense. Now, if I got caught... One of two things, when you're hurt, one of two things, you either cover up or you fire back. I chose to fire back. So th- that's, that's, that's boxing, right? So that's like Mike's saying, hey, you get hit, it changes everything. What's your fight? There is no, we're not football. We're not basketball. We don't do that. We're not a game plan. <laughs> you know what you want to try to do, what you want to implement. You know, I'm a pressure fighter. I'm going to jump right on this guy, put the pressure right on him. If he comes out to war, Griff used to say, if he comes out to war with you, Stand there and you hold your ground, back him up. You make you control center ring. If he starts to move on you, walk him down, walk him down, cut off the ring, walk him down, touch him with the yeah, touch him with the jab, you know. So that's you know, that's that's pretty basic, you know. Right, right. Pretty what basic. do you 
What do you do in a fight like that when you get your bell rung? Like, say, say there's a minute and a half to go around, you get you get caught. Well, Sean, how, how do you survive? How do you survive? What do you do? Sean, my title fight against Arfrias. He yeah. hurt me. I got banged first thirty seconds. He caught me in the left hook, staggered me, <laughs> and I, you know. But when you're in great shape, you're able to regain yourself. Yeah. But I was I was staggered, so you know, and he kept throwing punches at me. But what did I do? I fired right back. I chose to fire back. You fire back because when you hurt, you, what happens when you fire back? It breaks the guy up. It makes him back off you a little bit. But if you cover up, if you guys are going to go in kamikaze on you. I'm a kamikaze. On you. So either you, you fire back or you cover up. I chose to fire back. And what happened is I broke him up a little bit. I was able to regain myself. Then we were in toe to toe action. And then I wound up catching him, dropping him. Oh, man, you know, like a shark smell of blood. And then I just j- jumped on. Were you ever? Were, can you talk? Go ahead, about, can you talk about? Can you talk about that fight? Because when you, when our when uh, Frias caught you, right, and you and you you got rattled a little bit. You came back. You you went on a barrage. But, but, you threw right. thirty three punches. Is this yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't, right. I don't even know if you can do this as right. a human. You threw thirty three punches <laughs> in twenty two seconds. I mean, are you kidding me? Like what? What? Well, just keep... And then you and then you and then you won and then you won the title. So right. take us through those that barrage you threw. And then winning the belt, and what that finally meant to you in 1982. Well, like I said, I, I was hurt, but then when I caught him, I dropped him. Like I said, I was a shark smelling blood. <laughs> and then when I signed him to get up, I just jumped on him. And when that referee stopped it, Richard Green stopped it, and we get, you know, won the title. It was like, you know, people say, "What was that feeling like?" I said, "It was the most euphoric feeling in my life." I could, the only thing that compared to it was seeing each one of my children born. But other than that. <laughs> not that we'll compare to it. But nothing in my professional life will ever compare to that ever. No matter what I do from here on. And so um I I just it was it was just you can't explain it, right? I finally accomplished my lifelong dream. And so but you know and then now you know the funny thing is you know, we celebrated my family, my fans, you know, we had a great one of the best uh, uh celebrations in, in, in Vegas, they're still talking about it. We had a party. <laughs> They came up to Youngstown, but it was like, you know, Sean, it was at that time, something that was needed, I guess. I, my relationship with my city is different than most. Yeah. I think it's because at that time, the city was on a down. We were only four years removed from the, uh, the, the five, you know, four and a half, five years removed from steel mill shutting down. Um, uh, the people need something to hold on to. I happened to be the guy, we were at the highest unemployment we have ever been at. So it gave people something to hold on to, and I, you know, I happened to be that guy. Thank God for that. And uh, plus, my style of fighting was very emblematic. And you know, I keep coming forward, take shots to give shots. But over at the end of the day, I give more than I take, and I'm still standing. So that's kind of what it was. Uh, I mean, it was just it was it was just the greatest feeling in the world. As I said, nothing in my life, professional life, will ever compare to that ever again. I saw I saw the footage of your dad being in the ring, and uh, you know I know you'd always said that you wanted to win that belt for him. Like your mom was there too. Like well, well, that, yeah. mo- that moment with him was that like <laughs> hey? Well, you know, me this- was funny to talk about. It. Me, my mother, father, and my sister. Yeah. We just we cried. We just cried. <laughs> we had babies. You know, it's funny you said earlier that I never got the answer properly. <clears throat> you know, what my father meant to me how much he, I meant, but my mother. And I was telling I, I said earlier. My father was my inspiration. My mother's my motivation. My mother made me believe I was 10 foot tall. My mm-hmm. mother made me believe there was nothing I could accomplish, that the only limitations I put, I had were those I put on myself. My mother was the one who played there throwing the ball with me, playing catch with me every day, who showed me how to shoot a basketball, so, play baseball. My mother came from, was born in Jersey and, and, and you know, came here and reared my father at 19. My mother had immense, my mom graduated high school, she had immense mentality. You know, we know that now, what it was, right? Her IQ was up to church. <clears throat> my, and so when she came here, but she adapted. My mother was able to adapt. She, my mother adapted, you know. My mother and father knew each other six months before they looked. They went to, they, they lived in New York. They you had to go to, they had to go to Baltimore. You had to be a resident for 48 hours in Baltimore and married 54 years. <laughs> That's how awesome. Girls, how many girls, hey, Sean, how many girls you remember you knew for six months that you stole <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> so, 54 years. 
that, that's why, you know, now here's the thing too. That, you, you appreciate, I, I'm going off on different tangents. Keep I, going. I love it. Keep going, brother. How many people tell us, Ray, I pierced for Mary for 50 years. You know, because you know, I'm, 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 you know, I like being married so much that I did it twice. <laughs> I went for the daily double. I went for the daily double. <laughs> we know trifecta. No trifecta here. <laughs> but you know what? My first wife, I love her to death. Very close still. We had three beautiful kids together. But, right? Disconnect. And I said, the good Lord gave me a great wife. Great, great lady. But the good Lord gave me another great lady. And my wife now, and not my wife now, she's from Youngstown. My first wife, Miami. Not Miami, Miami. 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 <laughs> yeah, Miami. Miami. <laughs> My kids are Cuban, and my 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 my, my Spanish ain't bad. My, my, pretty good my Spanish. You know. And uh, at the home, my Panola ain't bad. But, but my wife now she's the youngest. But I met her when she was fifteen. I was twenty. And then you know I used to tell her mother when she's eighteen, I'm gonna take her out. When she was eighteen. I took her out a couple of times. But I was getting ready to move to California. It was at the end of my career. I finished retired. I was moving to California, and I didn't want to start something I couldn't finish. You know that type of thing. And then. 2000, well, you appreciate this, 2006, I finally got, gone through my divorce. Finally, I said, you know what? Can't do this anymore. It ain't never going to happen. You know, you try to get it back. You try to get it back. You fight to get it back. It don't work. And so a friend of mine called me. He said, Raymond, January of 2006, said, Raymond, he said, I started a new job. He's a physical therapist. He said, guess who took my job? He said, who? Tina, Tina Rossi. I said, no, kid, no. I said, how's she look? I said, how's she doing? He said, she's doing pretty good. She asked about you, you know, she asked about you, she goes, I hear Ray's going through a divorce. She said, yeah, unfortunately, she goes, yeah, so am I. So oh. she was, so she was trolling. On the line out. She's trolling. <laughs> I did. Yeah. But son, son, you appreciate this. You guys appreciate this. What is the first thing you ask? I go, how does she look? Because <laughs> <laughs> if he said, because if he said, oh, Raymond, she looks pretty good. You know? Because look, you got, because if he said, oh, Raymond, she looks like a beaten favorite. <laughs> hey, tell me about that. Now, you guys are, let me get a to in Youngstown, that's uh, a man. A beat <coughs> favorite would be for a guy or a woman, which means someone who once was, but is no longer. <laughs> right? She ain't win place for her show. That's a beaten favorite. So if he doesn't a beaten favorite, you go, well, thank you, send her, send her, tell her I said hello. <laughs> so that's how we're together. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but anyway, what I was getting to is that, you know, that's the thing. My mother was the one who made me believe. And my father used to say to me, Raymond, I love you just because. You're my baby. You ain't got to do nothing. You know, and, and that's a beautiful thing. And that's what I teach you, I kids. You don't have to do it, especially I love you just because. But you got to do, but, you know, here's what, but these are the things you should want, you know, and you give courage them and stuff. But ain't no child that should have to be anything more than just be my son, my child, yeah. right? So. Yeah. They don't, you know, and, and so I think that's, that's the thing. My mother installed all of that. My mom was a great one. John, you appreciate this. Tell people, my, my father's Sicilian. My mother was Irish. Oh, yeah. Hey, I mean, that's uh, good. Me I too. Know. By the way, exact same. My family, my dad's Sicilian. Serious? My mom's Irish. There you go. So what's me? So you know what that makes us? I makes it as a mean drug. It, it, it makes all the sense in the world. I know exactly what you're talking about. Tell Sean. Right. Tell people. The Irish side said, let's buy the guy a drink. It's a serious side. Let's whoop his ass. <laughs> yes, yes, that's so great. <laughs> oh man, I, 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 I don't know where we're no, at. No, we're good. Ray, 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 I used to, Ray, I used to do that too. Like my my dad, you know, he'd watch the games. You know, your 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 you know your dad, your mom's relationship was different. I could call. I could be. Uh, I could be in the biggest slump of my career. Call home, and my mom would be like, "Hey, Shawnee, how you doing? What's going on? We wouldn't talk baseball for two hours." I remember one time we're in we're in Chicago playing against the Cubs. Ball goes up, freaking winds, you know, winds howling. It comes That's back. Right. I go to catch it. Bam! Like iron skillet. I drop it. Well, I call home. Well, whenever my dad answered, I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> phone, you know, yeah. He's like, and I'm like, hey, what's up, dad? You know, is mom there? He's like, hey, before I give the phone to mom, he's like, remember you forgot the golden rule. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, uh, treat people the way you're treated? He's like. No, catch the ball with two hands. Two hands. <laughs> yeah. That's true. No. That's true. That's a my mom's story. Right? Two hands. Yeah. Exactly. My mom, I'll give you guys my mom's story since we're telling them now. My mother loved 
that I played baseball and all that. And so weekend, Saturday mornings, you got a double header and it's like 14 hours of the day. Well, my mom smoked like a pack of heaters an hour and she would bring, she would bring a cooler full of white wine spritzers. So by game two, my mom was half in a bag usually most of the days, but all she would say was when I, when I would get up to the plate, she'd be smoking a cigarette and she'd be like, whack it, Richie, whack it as hard as you can. And then like, I would go home and be like, mom, you got to stop saying that because all my friends are making fun of me because you're screaming whack it every time I come up to the plate. But that's why the moms, the moms... We're just yeah, as equally important in your oh, athletic absolutely. career as anything, right? Absolutely. It's so great. Hey, Ray, I want to talk. I want to, I want to, I got a couple little stories that like our, our buddy Carmen told me and I, I love him. You know, um, back after that Arturo Frias fight, you obviously were becoming a star out there in LA meeting different guys and Sammy Hagar, right? You, you developed a, a friendship with Sammy Hagar. Who was a boxer, right? Didn't did Sammy box a little bit? His, no, his father, he didn't train, but his father was an amateur. Told me. And Sammy told me his father was an amateur trainer. Okay. And, so I'm an amateur fighter. I'm sorry, amateur. Sammy loved sport boxing because of his father from way back. <laughs> but he, and he was going up. Sammy was training for a fight and didn't realize, you know, it's like the old saying, he got in the ring with the guy who really wanted a fight. You know? <laughs> So realize he played this guitar a hell of a lot better than two punch. So. But after that, after that fight, didn't you guys like? I'm a big memorabilia guy, as you can see in the background. Yeah, I got yeah. bats from guys that yeah. I held on at first base. Yeah. But didn't you give Sammy some some of the? I'm stuff? gonna tell you something. What was that? Not after I went to one day in Tyler, I retired. I moved to California in '85. I lose Tyler in '84, but due to rematch, in February of '85 with Bramble. Don't go, I lose a split decision. I go to California in June of 85. That time I was being represented by the William Morris Agency for commercial endorsements and uh, things like that. So I go out there and, um, and shoot. now find out that uh, there's a place called Carlos and Charlie's. It's on Sunset Strip in West Hollywood. Great nightclub. I used to go to their bonds all the time. <laughs> restaurant downstairs, Mexican restaurant downstairs. Night club upstairs. Great joint, man. Everybody used to go there. You know, I used to see Jermaine Jackson, Randy Jackson, you know, Prince used to come up there. You know, it was great. But every once in a while, they used to do a, um, a, uh, for all the radio stations, you know, the, you know, the car wash, come in with every day, they do an interview, but they had everybody there. So it'd be <laughs> top of the guys, all the singers and entertain actors and whatever. So I did it, right? And Alice Cooper's there. And then Sammy Hagar's there. And the guy said, Yeah, hey, you know what to meet you? I said, Sammy Hagar. I did. Oh, man, I'm a big fan. I remember when Sammy was what, Montrose? <laughs> then he went yes. on his own. You know, you can't drive 55, man. Come on, Sammy. Yeah, man, I love that. The Red that's Rocker, fun. man. That's the Red yeah. Rocker. Yeah. Now, that's was that they just got together with Van Halen. They released the first album already. So now, that's what he's doing. <laughs> doing uh doing the, the the car wash so i meet sammy get it off we hit it off and um he said hey man you know do you have any memory that I, I i'll trade you he says i'll trade you and i said well he, he says i'll get i said well, you know i'd love to have something of yours you know to, to, for for my you know for keepsake i said well i'll tell you what i'll give you one of my robes and trunks and I don't give them to nobody. I keep from my kids. Wow. That, the only one. <clears throat> I don't give them. I'll give them and I want to get, you give me a guitar. He said, that's a deal. And now Sam said this thing. Now the reason I'm telling you the story is so he gave me a guitar from the 55 tour. I can't drive 55 yeah. tour. Oh, yeah. And it has it. <laughs> the red guitar. Oh, man. Gives it to me. The case, don't bet. We trade. Now, now I got to be friends. So he invited me to his beach home. I go to his beach home, and we're talking one day. And if you remember, it, about 85, 86, 86, this is where all the censorship started, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Censorship it was too bad with the, with the music, and they didn't mm -hmm. want censorship. So Sammy says, their next album's getting ready to come. I said, I want to name our next album, Fuck. Yeah. I <laughs> Fuck. I think we can get away with it. <laughs> because, but our record, but the record label, I think, was Warner Brothers. They're having a hard time. They won't let us do it. And I go. I said they wouldn't have a hard time if they knew what it meant. 
do you mean? I said, fuck is, is an acronym. It's not a word. It's an acronym. So my mom was an old English major. My mom was an English major. As you used to say to me when I was younger, you're going to say some words, you better know what they mean. Because they ain't sure, you know. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, that word, the word is an acronym. It's, it's, the word means back in the old English rule, when the, the men would have sex with underage girls, they bring them up on charges and they put it for, uh, for unlawful carnal knowledge. I, F, and then wow. after period, they, so it took so long to write, they put F period, U period, C period, K period. For unlawful carnal knowledge. The guy would get jammed up on those charges. <laughs> but when they found out that people in the king's court, the king's men were getting jammed up on the same charges, all he did couldn't change it. He just put, he's right, fornication under consent from the king. <laughs> and oh you see, say, hey, sit back, it happened back then, it still happens now, right? You know, you don't, man. You want to change it the way it's your guy? I'm going to change it the way I want to change it. <laughs> F U C K, for love for, or fornication under consent from the king. I said, so it really don't mean it as an acronym. Are you kidding me? That's, I said, that's what it means. That's what they're name it. And sure enough, you went to the left. That's, so you named, let's just make this clear to everybody at home. You came up with the four unlawful coronal knowledge fuck title of right. Right. one of it's Van it's Halen's it's greatest it's albums, by the way. Like, when everybody was down on him, they came back with that. Unbelievable. If you, if you, go, if you go on it, and Sammy tells, talks about it, he has a story on YouTube that's better. He tells that story that I named the album. So, I actually got a gold, gold album, a platinum album from that. No way. <laughs> Holy <laughs> that, cow. Yeah. In the, that's a true story. That's a true what story. A story, bro. Wow. I that. Story. Yeah. That <laughs> and, is uh, so great. That is yeah. so great. Yeah. So uh, that, that, that's Carmen, our friend, your mutual friend Carmen, he wanted to go to a concert, so Sammy was playing. They were playing in Pittsburgh. So I called Saul Ken, called Sammy, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him into the city cons. Yeah, Car Carmen said one of the greatest things ever is when uh, – you were out in LA with Sammy and, and like you called him like Carmen, I got someone who wants to talk to you. Yeah. He's like, Yeah, he's like sixteen years old. He's like, Hey, it's Sammy Hagar, what's going on, man? He's like, Holy shit, Sammy Hagar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sammy, Sammy was great. That's Sammy so great, man. Dude, so so obviously you you gosh, from from your upbringing in Youngstown and how much that means to you, you know, all the way through your career to winning the belt to now you're hanging out with guys like Sammy Hagar and your name and your name and Van Halen album and, and you're you know friends with Sly Stallone and Schwarzenegger yeah. and all these all these things. I want to go back to one to one of your one of your last fights when you came back to fight Hector Macho Camacho in in eighty nine and you know. It pains me because I watched the fight. I still don't know how you didn't win that fight. What nah, a I, be, I beat him. That's why I, I was like, what a, what a joke that you didn't win yeah. that fight. Can you yeah. take us back? Why did you come back to fight Hector Macho Camacho after you hadn't fought in years? Well, first of all, that fight was basically set. We had that fight set. And then the WBA came out and said, if you don't fight Bramble, because Bramble's people, the Duvas, put pressure on them. We were going to pay him step-aside money, which was common back then. We got to let two fights fight, and then they get the winner. Uh -huh. <laughs> they, get, they pay them, step aside, you get paid, you know, an extra payday without having to do anything, and they fight the winner. But the dude was pressed them. So the WBA said, if you don't fight Bramble, we're going to have to strip you of the title. At that time, the titles meant everything. Right. Uh -huh. So I said, no, oh, my manager was going to fight it. I said, no, 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 we'll go to Bramble, we'll beat Bramble, we'll get past the Bramble, we'll go right to Camacho. Obviously, it didn't happen the way it should have. And so, and then when I fought, the, they said, well, if you get three rematch against Bramble and you get through Bramble the second, you know, the, the fight's still there. After the second fight with Bramble, I had no love for it anyway. I, uh, I, was, I knew that was going to be my last fight. So I was heard about how I could have been, should have, you know, fighting Camacho, Camacho. I, this mouth, this mouth, this mouth. He wouldn't shut, you know, shut up. <laughs> and that was the one fight I always wanted. I was so confident I would have beat him because I was things I knew about this guy. Uh, so finally, I was doing an off Broadway play. I was doing an off Broadway play in New York. <laughs> and they, um, um, they came to me and said, would you fight Hector Camacho? Said, yeah, man, Camacho, shit, yeah, I bought, that's the fight I was wanting. I said, I was wanting to fight. So um, I took it and I had a great training camp, great training camp. And um, uh, train art, went to Vegas, trained. And um, the difference was, you know, Sean, guys like me, we have to fight regularly. A guy like Ray Leonard could take off. 
and then come back and fight because it takes them three or four rounds. You run the ring, get acclimated. Mm. Guy like me, you got to be fighting regularly. You can't take time off. Yeah. So the fight with Camacho, the, one, the reason that I'm saying this is because I know I wasn't going to get hurt against Camacho. Camacho's not a puncher. You know, I'm not going to get hurt against Camacho. <laughs> but I look at that fight. I wasn't, it, was, it was a good fight. It wasn't a great fight in my eyes because I wasn't sharp. You know, I was dragging punches. But the one thing my man, trainer, Murphy Griffith, said to me is, Ray, don't run after him. Walk him down. Let people let people see who's running and who's fighting. Walk him down. Don't run after him. That's what I did. In retrospect, I thought maybe I should have jumped on him more. You know, but walked him down. All he did was clutch, grab. It was a good fight, like I said. But I hit him. He didn't, he didn't do nothing. Every time he tried to throw punches, I break him up because I fire mm. right back at him. I knew Camacho. I knew back in the day. If Camacho had a certain tells, certain tells, and he did the same thing all the time. As soon as he started the one thing, he did a double jab, a right hand, a double jab, a left hand, blah, blah. As soon as he did a double jab, I broke the jab, I stuck a jab out in his face, and it went butt. And he stopped. Because I knew what he was going to do. He liked to move around, move around. And as soon as he sat down, he double jab, that, you know, so boom, every time he stopped, I stick the jab out, break him up. <laughs> I should, I won that fight. Mm. Like I said, after fight, they even asked him. He said on Spanish television, "Yeah, I lost, but they gave it to me." So I wow! Oh, is that what he said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Now, it, <laughs> cut. I cut to. How about this? You appreciate this. About a month after the fight, month, month and a half, I get a call from a friend of mine who's one of the casino bosses. He's a, he's the president of one of the casinos. I don't want to say casino. One of the casinos in Vegas. He's Ray, can you come over for lunch? I said, yeah, I saw, I saw, I'll fly over, you know, it's Monday, I'll fly over on Wednesday. So on those days, you can take the, you know, $24, $28, fly to Vegas, <laughs> back, you know. <laughs> but I, so I flew in in the morning, we meet for lunch, and he said, and he said, and he's with another guy, and he says, look, I'm working through lunch. So finally, he says to me, look, I want to tell you something. We all know you won the fight. We all know, but you couldn't get the decision. I said, excuse me? We know you won, but you couldn't get the decision. We, no you shit. Say, he really? said, because there was so much money bet on you. Now, I know I was a three to one underdog. Holy oh, shit. What? He said, he said, he said, I was a three to one. He said, if you win, the fight was in Reno. The fight wasn't in Vegas. He said, if you win, it breaks that town. That town goes under. Said, if the fight was here, we could have handled it. So we want you to know, you could, you, we won, we all know you won the fight, but you couldn't win the, you weren't going to get the decision. How do you handle that? As you well, spent your blood and life and heart to fight that fight, and you're telling and, us. And, and I told you, I said, well, I appreciate that. Don't make me feel any better. Don't make it right. Hey, let me know. And that's why we go back to early when we were talking about show <laughs> business. Business yeah. comes before the show. Mm. So I said to him, so I said this, well, what if I would have knocked him out? Said, well, then we would have had to deal with it, wouldn't we? But. You did. Wow. Holy so, shit. Unless that happened, you weren't going to get the decision. Not, but I want you to know, we know you won. What wow. you weren't going to do. Ray, but Ray, wasn't, isn't, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm sure I, I don't know. I'm sure it still is, but I'm saying yeah. back when you boxed, <laughs> wasn't that a, like, wasn't, common, know, common. I don't know if it was the mob or the no. or gambling or what? No, I think, no, there wasn't, there wasn't no mob. That, you know, that's, that's the old James Cagney, John Garfield films. Oh, okay. Okay. Really? <laughs> Yeah, doesn't mean they didn't tell certain fighters you got to fall. But those are the guys that are on the underground. The, the main event fighters, look. Now, doesn't mean they, they didn't go to the fighters. But what they could do is go to you, go to you. Yeah. The, the judges. Mm. The judges. Judges have to watch it in a, with a, a slanted angle. So to speak. Yeah. I mean, that happens and that still happens. Yes. Yeah. That still happens. There's a lot of fights. There's too many fights we could talk about that. What, what about what? What about the fights now? Because I, I saw you. I saw you at the Jake Paul mm. Tyrone oh Woodley fight. Yes. I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, like, I, can just can Sean Casey become a freaking champion? <laughs> now? Can I get something? I would get my ass kicked. I would get my ass kicked. Like, no, can you talk about that? Yeah, I didn't want to go to that. I was invited. <laughs> this is on the commission. Like today, we had, I don't, we had a boxing Ohio boxing athletic commission boxing, but a boxing commissioner. But a meeting this morning. This is on the commission. They said to me, Raymond, you don't you haven't gone to many fights, which I don't go to any of them, to be honest with you. This is some young son. It would be good for you to be seen there. I said, I don't I can't I, I can't buy into this bullshit. I yeah. can't do that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So it'd be good for you, really. But so the commission asked me, it'd be good for you to be there. I said, okay, I'll come. That'd be entertaining. I went there and 
the whole undercard was a hell of a fight. Undercard was good. It was a good card, right? But that made it was such horse shit. That's why after the fight, I was asked by a friend of mine, Marcos Vegas from from uh, Fox Sports. Ray, what'd you think about it? I said it was all horse shit. It was all horse shit. Bullshit. All horse shit. Next day, Ray Mancini said it's all horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thankful, I admire what he's doing. I admire what they do. Him and his brother, <laughs> I admire it, but you can't buy into it. Well, can I ask real quick? It. So, uh, my brother, you trained my brother in jujitsu. You were a boxer. Yeah. What? What? Do, do you? You? So you have a mutual respect for the other kind of arts like yes. you had, yes. but they don't work together. No, you're no, saying? No, 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 no. Just look, Jake Paul. He's calling out real fight. He never called out a real boxer. Now I call out Tommy Fury. Not be very can fight a little bit, but here's the problem. He ain't calling out. And then he, you know what he says? He, you know, eventually wants to get to fight with Canelo. You know what the crazy thing is? That could actually happen because <laughs> they build up such like look, look what the oh, they hype the, it up. What the what the it gets up Mayweather? What's his name? Conor McGregor. Uh, yeah, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Yeah. No, just look. If you can have an audience for it, why not sell it? Take Paul. He's like tough. Look, I, I have a lot of admiration for him and his brother. What they've taught, what well, the YouTubers, right? Mm. What they've accomplished. I, I have a lot of admiration. I said, look, he actually gets a real trainer. BJ Flores is a trainer. Andre Berto's a hype guy. He's got real fighters in his camp. Brain's like a real fighter. I, I got admire. He spars like a real fighter. He just can't fight. <laughs> He just can't that must just drive you crazy. That must drive you absolutely crazy to see somebody in your sport. It makes me, it makes me sick. <laughs> and when we went there, then all the believers were there. Uh -huh. <laughs> they had their hair. The guys, you know, the hair is like they comb their hair the same way as the, 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 the Paul brothers. Yeah. They, 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 the it's like you can't believe this shit. You can't believe it. And the guy didn't win that fight. Oh, didn't yeah. win it. But he fought, realized the guy wasn't going to back down. He actually fought the guy who was going to... Oh, God. It's just... Oh, my God. Crazy. So great. So, so Ray, you're, 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 your career comes full circle. You get elected into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. Now, that's 13 years, though, after you retired. Yeah. Well, what, shut, what? Look, shut out. I never look. When I got the calls, I was on the ballot. And one time, I, I was the first flat, you know, first time. I got the call on Bell. Wow, I'm so honored. I mean, I felt like I won. I said to the writer, I said, and I said this, I'll, I'll tell you, I said this later on too. I said, I'm no false modesty, but I don't think my, my career warrants it. I said, not, and he said, well, what do you mean? I said, because I didn't fight long enough. Five, five, five and a half years. So when you think of baseball, what baseball player five and a half years to the Hall of Fame, right? Right, right, no. Right? At least you think of longevity. But I think of fighters, I think of longevity. The Hagglers, the the the, the Aguayos, Brands, the Larry Holmes. When I got the call that I actually made it to come in December, I was like, I get, I was like, so on. Then I, I don't want. I must wrap. I, I, but I don't think I deserved it because my, I didn't. I didn't think my career warranted it. And the writer said to me, "No, I disagree with you." That because it wasn't the quantity of your fights, but it was the quality of your fights. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I said, ah, I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I have like, look, I'm flattered that all my heroes, guys, my heroes I looked up all my life, <laughs> guys I became friends with, and I'm able to sit, sit with them side by side now. I'm, I'm so honored by that. And I, I just, my parents, were they were there. You know, They were there in spirit. They were there. I just wish, you know, it, 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 was, it was such a wonderful thing. Not so much for, but for my children. Mm. My two boys inducted me. Um, I got to it real fast. That's right. You know, to this day, I'm the only one that had somebody outside of. <laughs> they, when you get back to baseball, you pick who you want, right? Mm. Any other sport, you pick who you want. Boxing Hall of Fame, they have a guy who's going to induct you. <laughs> so I get there. I didn't know this. So, so I get there. I said, um, we're at the vet. So night before they have a dinner, right? So I, Ed Brophy, as the founder of the, as the Ed, <clears throat> my kids are going to me, how much time do each of them got to speak? How much time is there to speak? Because they're going to, they go, he said, no, 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 uh, we have Sean to induct you. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> they said, yeah. I said, well, who's Sean? They go, Sean comes up. 
This guy. <laughs> nice to meet you. And I'm thinking like, like, like now nah, I'm heartbroken. I'm going to tell my kids. I'm not going to tell my kids. I'm thinking, how's this work? Cut to during the night. And the light goes on and on. And I have people speak it. Now that I'm going to be the last speaker. That means the last speaker. Lights get on a little longer than the tooth. They have about seven, nine, ten, fourteen feet. I don't know how many guys, right? Now it's like after eleven, no, almost eleven thirty. So I get up, I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna make this quick. I said, we're all getting tired, it's a little longer than the tooth here. I said, yesterday, is there so because the guy, you know, Sean was there, was the guy who was there <laughs> seat that night, right? So I said, then when last night I asked that brophy, I was gonna have my kids induct me. I said, so I asked that brophy. How long did he have to speak? Each one of them. He told me no. He said, told me Sean was going to duck me. I looked at the guy and said, Sean, I'm sure you're a lovely guy, but you got no shot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I said, okay, with you, I'm going to ask you, is it okay if my son's going to duck me? That's awesome. The said, hey! <laughs> my son's going to duck to me. I'm, I'm still choked up, but I think that it's great. People give them a standing ovation. To this day, could you believe it? I'm, I'm the only guy to have somebody outside the guy. That's there. unbelievable. And what? I, That's it, unbelievable. It's crazy. <laughs> it's stupid, but you're good for you, though. That makes no sense. Holy uh, shit. That, but that's boxing, right? Boxing, you always do the gas back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. So, Ray, so, Ray, uh, so now I, we, were, we, were, we were looking at, too, you have a, you have a tequila, you, you have a tequila now what? with Larry Holt. How did right. that happen? Well, well, let, 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 well, let me get let me get that. First of all, I have a wine company. The wine comes in 2009. Okay. Pretty much in the wine being for California. Nice. Uh, I drink a bottle a day, basically. One to two for lunch. Nice. Third to two glasses for dinner. So four only four glasses in a bottle. So basically. A true Italian. A true Italian. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Go for that button. 2017, I got in the bourbon business. I have a bourbon company here in Young. I was approached by some guys here in Youngstown. <laughs> and um, I said, you know, look, only reason I got a bourbon is because I, I'm a teetotaler. I'm a wine guy. <laughs> but at night, late at night, when you're drinking a smoke of a cigar, right? I have a cigar. Watch it. I, you know, I like to have bourbon on ice. Mm. Bourbon and ginger ale make a highball, right? I see. Real, yeah. real bourbon guys hate it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're ruining the bourbon. No, Catch no, up no. on a steak. I said, yeah, I, said, I told myself, but basically, I'd have to be, I have to agree to it. I have to taste it. No. Uh. So, a company out of Cleveland called Cleveland Whiskey, and the guy patented a pressurized system that fast forwards the process, meaning wow. instead of five years, five months. Wow. Three years, three months. I mean, it's a, it's a pressurized system. <laughs> so, we, were, we did a taste test. Now, Sean, I'm sure you'd love to drink your bourbon. After three or four bourbons, they all start tasting sick. Everything tastes over. Yeah. And I looked at it and said, what about that one over there? There was one underneath the desk that said maple barrel bourbon. They go, well, then we kind of just make that for ourselves. Well, would that be a problem? Well, not for us. Yeah. Make it. That's the one. The absolutely wow. delicious. Got a little maple taste, right? Plus, you know, one thing. you got to have a, you got to have a hook. Maple barrel bourbon was a hook. Yeah. Cut That's to great. Now. 2018, we send it to uh, uh, Bourbon Olympics. It wins a bronze medal. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. You know, every February in San Francisco, they have spirit competition, world spirit competition. All over the world, <laughs> every week, like gin, vodka, bourbon, but we got bronze medal. Wow. How about this? So now, we sell a lot of it in Northeastern Ohio, down in Columbus area. We do a special reserve this year, special reserve. Just do 100 cases. Well, I'm being nice to meet one of my guys sends it to the spirit competition again in February. Just found out a couple months ago, we won a double gold. What? Double gold means all, right. five, all five judges had a vote, unanimous top 10 score. Wow, so congratulations. What does that mean? If we can't get outside Northeastern Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> What's it mean? The second guy said to me, a friend of mine the DJ said, right. What difference does it make if the Rolling Stones are playing downtown Youngstown, the Cavalli Center, if nobody knows? <laughs> now, <laughs> we're going to do it in Nevada. We're going to get it in New York and get a double goal down. Awesome. It's, it's, what's it called? Boom, boom, bourbon. Don't Beautiful. Right? Ah, boom. Yeah. Now, yes. 
<laughs> but I got the wine company, and I said, I'm not in the liquor business. I really, I, was, I said, I'm not in the liquor business. I guess I am. <laughs> now, last few couple of years, about a year and a half ago, I get approached by a woman, Lisa, who's a, uh, uh, Lisa uh, is a, is a, uh, she was a lawyer who was a boxing promoter. And Lisa uh, Elevich, Lisa Elevich, um, tell me she's got a bourbon company. She knew I had a, a bourbon company. She had a tequila company. And since she says, I'd like you to be part of our company. I said, be honest with you, I'm a, I'm a bourbon and a wine guy, but I do like tequila, obviously, when you have Mexican food. Mm-hmm. But you have that margarita, you got that, you want that top line <laughs> tequila, right? Yeah. Plus, my kids, Sean, I'm sure I don't know how you're because my kids are in you know, 20s, 30s. Yeah. That bourbon shot, I mean, tequila shots. Mm-hmm. They think that being them tequila shots like they're a candy, right? Right. <laughs> so I said to them, when they said, Pop, oh, you got to, so I got involved because, again, I said, I got to try it though. It's organic, all organic, and it was del- absolutely delicious. A one with life. Ow. Yeah. Ow. I like Ow. that. Yeah. One with life. It's organic tequila. So, and Lisa, and so she, Lisa's a smart woman, very smart woman. So she got me, Larry Holmes, the girl Maureen O'Shea, Maureen O'Shea who's the, she was the uh, inspiration for um, the the movie with Clint Eastwood and the girl won Academy Award for Billion Dollar Baby. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we got a modern, uh, and she also signed Efimo Lopez, like the hottest thing cool. in you know yeah. contemporary boxing. Yeah. So we each got a piece of it. And all you gotta do is put out, you know, email, you know, yeah. through social media, which I'm not the best at. No, we're <laughs> learning that too. We're trust me, we're learning that with this show too. It's a <laughs> pain yeah. in the ass. It's it annoying. What was that? <laughs> your tequila guy shot it. Sean, got a feeling you look like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like <laughs> to try that. I like to try your tequila. One with life. So, one with life. Uh, I have, you know, the, the wine, but the bourbon, boom, and, and Northeast, or you get it online, get it online, you know, boom, boom, bourbon, or tequila, one with life, online. That's the best. That's the beautiful thing about e-commerce, right? Mm-hmm. You, no matter what it says, you can get it, and you get yeah. a sense. You'll like it. You'll, you'll love it. I, I love it, man. I, I love that you're doing that. It's funny. This is a good segue to the to the final part of this of this uh, <laughs> conversation because. The, the, we do this little game called nine and ninety, and and it, it, sometimes it sounds like we've been drinking bourbon and, and, uh, <laughs> when we're doing it. So, so chick, why don't you tell why don't you tell Ray what we're doing here? Yes, nine quick stupid questions. They're dumb. You're gonna have fun with it. But it's I, fun. It's yeah, fun. but it's this or that. So I'm gonna ask Sean a question. He's gonna pick one thing or the other and give a quick explanation. When he's done answering the first question, you just pick up right where he left off with the same okay. thing. All right. Okay. Here we go. We got, we got a little definitely a boxing theme because I'm honored to be around <laughs> you right now. Hall of Fame baseball broadcaster Marty Brenneman here. It's time for 9 in 90, the most ridiculous segment in all of sports. First question, Sean. Pick one movie. Rocky, Million Dollar Baby, or Raging Bull? Uh, You know what? I'm I'm just a Rocky guy, and I've always loved all of them, so I got to go Rocky. All right. Oh, shit. Sean, it's a good choice, man. You know, everyone thought they were Rocky after watching it. After watching it, right? But for me, Raging Bull, of course. Right? Mm, yeah. But I'm going to go on more. My favorite boxing movie of all time, Body and Soul, 1947 with John Garfield. I'm Remember watching that. I did a remake in 1997. You did? I'll have I did, to check that I did, out. I did, I did, yes. I got the rights. It took me 10 years ago. I had the rights from MGM. I did, and I played the John Garfield role. 1998, 1998, I did million, I did Body and Soul, and uh, wow. it was great. Yeah. All right. Great. Great answer. So, uh, okay, next one. Favorite Ray. Pick one Ray. Ray Romano, Ray Charles, or Ray Liotta, Sean? Ray Romano, Ray Charles. Ray... I like Ray Liotta because I just love his movies. Okay. I love all the movies, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> all the good fellas and all that stuff. Yeah. We're a terrific actor, and I know Ray Liotta. We're actually friends. But that's what? not the Ray Charles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can sing it, man. There you go. Great. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right, Sean. If you order wings, are you a mild buffalo, honey barbecue, or atomic fire guy? Uh, you know what? I'm a little bit in between. I'm, I'm more of like I'm like a hot medium. Buffalo. Like I know, I, I, I like I like I like to burn a little bit. I like to paint a little bit. So I gotta go hot buffalo. All right. See, my kids, my father, the hotter the better. My, my son, the hotter the better. 
My wife likes that. Me, I'm a honey mustard guy. There you go. I'm with you. Tangy. I can't do hot. I can't do sweet and tangy. Awesome. All right. Sean, would you rather be in... I thought you liked the the Italian hot pepper. The Italian hot pepper. Yeah, too hot. Always sweet. Yeah, I'm with you too. Same here. All right, Sean, would you rather be an opera singer or a cowboy? Oh, I definitely would rather be a cowboy. You kidding me? I, I would, I'd love to be a cowboy back in the day. All right. I'd want to be an opera singer, man. I'm ah. telling you. Ah. I can't sing a lick. Them guys are singing. Oh, yeah. Bocelli. Let's talk Italian here. Pavarotti, Bocelli. Pavarotti. <laughs> Domingo. Yes. And it's funny. It's yeah, funny. Sean. Get out of this conversation. And the, the, the new guy, the, the was, it was one of the greatest tenors of our world, one of the greatest tenors, he had an operation, life, true story, they're going to make a movie out of it, my company's one of them, huh? and we're, we're, we're going to be made, and he became now as a bass, and Ruben Amoretti, check I'm him out, that down right now. Ruben Amoretti, and the, the movie's called The Pearl Fisher, trust me, it's going to be a, it it's a rocky ass type of movie, but in the world awesome. Ruben Amaret, you listen to that. But I love them guys. Look, <laughs> stuff, I don't care what you look like. You can look like you can look like dead like you're dead. Yo, you're dead like Keith Richards. You gonna get the knockout, those knockout blood. You can look like Walking Dead, like Keith Richards, Walking Dead. You gonna get if you can sing a lick, you gonna get the most knockout blood. You see, opera, classic opera. Oh, oh yeah. My God. <laughs> classic music. Oh my god! I didn't know the classical opera uh, dudes were pulling all the hot chicks. I didn't know that. Oh man! Yeah, all of them, all of them, all of them. Panties on the panties on the. <laughs> all right, switching gears a little bit. Do you almost done? We're halfway there. Sean, do you think you could beat an orangutan in a fight? You know what? I really don't. I think that rang it. I'd, I'd run for the hills. I think that orangutan would freaking get a hold of me. I wouldn't know what the hell to do. Now, if I'm ready, I, I stick and move and I walk that orangutan down. But for me, I just freaking run for the hills and, and I'm so slow. What I'm about you, Ray? Down. We got a pro here. No, no. How <laughs> did you get to you? You gotta hold your ground, man. Take some weight. Scream, yell. I'm gonna beat you. The nose. Right? <laughs> there you go. So now we just learned how to fight an animal from one of the greatest fighters of all time. All right, Sean. Oh, I fight no animals. <laughs> all right, ready? <laughs> Sean, uh, surf or ski? Uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather ski. I, 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 I surf. I just kind of think I can get up on a surfboard. Okay. okay. Ski. No, I've never tried, tried surfing. It looks cool, but I got to tell you, I'm not. Not your I stuff. I do ski. Okay. I've done, I've done ski a little bit. I tried it. Not very well, but yeah. I did it okay. Stood up on it. You know. But ski, yeah. I don't like anything I can't see on blood. I don't want to know what's underneath. You know, I don't uh, really I, have to. All, all those years in Santa Monica, you never never surfed? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's crazy. And I have all my friends. A lot yeah. of friends of mine went surfing. used to invite me out. I used to go to the beach. Look, how many times you go to the beach? They go, I said, there's the beach. I wave at it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I go in. I dip my toe. I get out. Yeah. You By know, the way, Santa Monica Beach. The, the water's a little different than Florida, as you know. Yes, so, that's yes. true. Oh yeah. That. yeah. By the way, uh, quick story. Big Pauly, who we talked about at the beginning of this, was actually in Blue Cl- Blue Crush. That 450 pound guy, one of the best surfers on the West Coast too. Pauly was. Did you know that? Who's that? Pauly. Big Pauly surfed. He was in. Pauly, he... I know he surfed. But he was in that. I didn't know that. Yeah, Blue Pauly's Crush. Yes. Jess, they all like to go surfing. Jess is a good surfer, too. Yeah, Jess, great but, surfer. So is my brother, yeah. Anyway, that's such a small world. All right, last two. <laughs> Real quick. Uh, change a diaper or clean up dog poop, Sean? You've done oh, them I'd both. Rather, uh, yeah, I'd rather change a diaper. No, no, you know what? Well, I change a diaper because it's my kids, so I feel good about that. <laughs> that's right. But I, I, I just, I have a dog, and I, I'm starting <laughs> to pick up some dog poop every once in a while, and I think I'd rather change a diaper all than right. the dog poop. Uh, see, I change diapers. That because like I said, being a father, it's my kid. It's the, isn't that cute? Look at yeah. the color. Right? <laughs> yeah. Look at yeah. the color. Because it's yours, right? Because I, but you know what? I clean up dog shit like I'm it's part of my part of my every day. But I got dog. I'm cleaning up that dog shit every day. It's like part of my job now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm out there. People out there weeding. People planting flowers. I'm picking up dog. Uh, shit. Yeah, it's the husband <laughs> job. 
It's not even, uh, you don't even, God. you don't even get to decide who does that job. That's just the no. husband job. No. Done deal. All right, no. very last question. <laughs> We've been so honored to have you here. Thank I've been you. excited to Thank ask you. this oh, last pleasure. question right here. How many rounds, Sean, would it take Boom Boom Mancini to knock you out? <laughs> I have to say one round. When he hits me right in the pressure point by <laughs> the, the ear, points. it's freaking over. Okay, it's he, over. Learned, he learned from that. He yes. No. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go start knocking people in their pressure points for the next <laughs> week straight. That's, Sean's a hell of an athlete. Sean's good at He's been very kind. Yeah. Okay. But let me tell you something. John didn't. What Sean didn't say is he's bringing in the lumber. He's, <laughs> yeah. bringing, he's bringing in the lumber. See, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. look. I don't. And let me tell you something. I don't mess with heavyweights. John, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, this is oh, such an honor. Thank you so, so much. Right, I'm so glad to be a part of this. I it. Listen, John, we got to give a shout out to Carmen Brain. One more time. Carmen, thank you for setting it up. What's the name of the Yeah, Kachina, Kachina Bella, one of the best Italian restaurants. Kachina Bella, is that a Pittsburgh? There you if go. If you're in Pittsburgh, come to Kachina Bella, the best pizza going. I've, I've eaten a lot of good pizzas in Brooklyn. Carmen's is better. Come <laughs> out to Kachina Bella, Pittsburgh. He loves you, Ray. I love you, Ray, man. Thank you thank so much you. Thank for you. your time, brother. So appreciate it. Maybe, maybe we'll cross paths if you come down this way. So. Or I would, I would love to, man. I would love to. Okay, brother. You should be on, and you should be on Fox doing this M NBL. You yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. There's some of them guys there. You got to get them off. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got the big names, though. You got yeah. the big names, though. <laughs> Did you play with Barry Larkin? Oh, I played eight years with Lark, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I, mean, I knew you since I was trying to think of the overlap. Eight no. years with Lark, dude. The, the, one of the <laughs> best, <laughs> first time, one of my favorite teammates. And man, could he play, bro. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hall of Fame, one of the best ever, yeah. And, 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 and very good announcer, too. Yes. I heard yeah, great. Heard he's great. He's great. Yeah, awesome. he's great. Yeah. All right, All right man. Thank you thank so you, much. Ray. Thank you so much, yeah, You're the greatest. We'll see you down the road, Thank you, man. Be safe, man. Thank you. All right, Shawnee. There you go. Oh, just you and me now? Yeah. Now I can brag about him. I was like yeah. staring at him just now. That was fucking, I'm sorry, I'm cursing. I fucking I, I, awesome. I was like, fucking I was like, awesome. It, dude, that oh. was fucking awesome. I was like, <laughs> really Chinch, was. I was like, I was like, if Chinch calls him sir one more time, I'm going to punch Chinch in the face. I can't help I was getting it. ready for Ray. You've called Johnny Bench ch uh, sir. You've called Jim Leland sir. Johnny Bench tried to fight you through the freaking uh, Jim Leland, you called sir. He wanted, he wanted to punch you in the face. Yeah, that's true. And now you've called Ray Mancini sir, and I thought he was going to punch you in the All face. All right, new, new, new role. I won't say that anymore. Dude, oh my Dude, god, when he starts awesome. talking about, oh my god, I just want just, to just fight somebody. I'm going to go fight talking. everybody I see right now. I'm going to go fight everybody I know. <laughs> dude, dude, hey, Chidge, if you go back and look at the tape, when he started, when he started uh, boxing, oh, I, found my myself, god. I found myself juking in the... In the I, I like, said it at one like, point. Why am I going left? Why am I going right? Yeah, at one, at one point he explained something, he goes, and then I'm just like... Poof, poof, and I was like, <laughs> I actually think I said it out loud. I'm like, do you see how fast that was just now? <laughs> the, the camera, we have like 5K cameras that couldn't even and catch how fast his arm is moving. Oh I love my it. God, bro. And I'll tell you, like, so, it's, it's so cool because, like I said, my brother has such great, strong, tough, strong will, good people, friends, and they all love this man. He was, it's funny, you didn't even talk about his, his time in LA. Like, he has trained people left and right, but, but you hear how he talks about his family and, and values and all yeah. that stuff. I don't think he just trains people to box, he trains people to be, uh, uh, Good people, standing good, good people, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Well, well, he's so he's so humble, and you what you find is the toughest dudes, the baddest mm -hmm. dudes out there, are the quietest, most humble guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? like you know, they sit back, like he said when he was talking about, hey man, these these kids nowadays are so soft. You say anything, what you say about me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say, like, yeah, it doesn't matter what I said about you. Go kick ass or don't. Mm -hmm. Like, don't listen to me or what I got to say. Yeah. Like, believe in yourself and go do something about it. I, I loved when he started talking about. The, the, just the mental side of boxing and how he thought right. about himself and how he knew he was going to make it. It's just, yeah. it was awesome, man. That's why they it call it the sport of Kings. Awesome. They call it the sport of Kings. Cause you think about it, two grown men going into a, a box together and trying to hurt each other with respect though. But, and there's so many like, like life lessons to being a boxer that like you can tell he's, yeah. he's in, he's in, uh, evolved past like a normal person with the thoughts that are in his head. Yeah. And I'm so glad like, yeah. again, he got it. He said it. We didn't talk to him about this specifically. He got out when he had to get out because he can sit there with us and talk to us. Right. He's, he's, he's sharp as a whip, funny, smart. I'm so glad he's, 
you know, still around and we can hear stories from a guy like that who literally did one of the most dangerous things in the world for 15 (laughs) years of his life, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Yeah. It is. It's amazing. But that was, that was awesome. Chich. That was awesome. It's so awesome. I I mean, that was, I swear, I'm sorry. I, I, I love a lot of, a lot of the people we've had on. I mean, I have not been so like fanboy as I was yeah. for that show. I was just like, "What's well, you say now?" Like, well, come on, <laughs> fucking, let's go. Like, it's so great. Well, what's so, what's so cool, bro, is we're we're in the baseball world, so we know all yeah, the baseball players. True. We interview them. They're our, they're our friends. When you yeah. get Boom Boom Mancini on, you're like, "Damn, this is really <laughs> yeah, it's so cool." He's, he's telling us about boxing. He's telling us about <laughs> yeah. winning the belt. He's telling you know, yeah, us like so he's telling us about um, uh, naming the um, for unlawful carnal knowledge. Oh my Van god, Hammond. how about that? <laughs> oh shit. The legend. Oh, awesome. Two hours and five minutes. This is the first. Uh, one of my lights went out. That's how long we talked to him. I charge these things. They have like eight hour battery value. And one of them lied out because oh I was so God. excited about that. But anyway, man. So good, bro. Thanks again. So that was great. All right, brother. I love you, man. And I, uh, I will see you next week. And we'll we'll uh, we'll figure out who's coming, who's joining, <laughs> yeah, coming into yeah. the mayor's office. And once again, just want to tell everybody that listens to us, that listens to us on No Filter or listens to us, you know, wherever you wherever you get your uh, your podcast you know we really appreciate it we're very grateful and keep subscribing to us yes. if you subscribe to us and download it with us for some reason we don't understand it either but like <laughs> it does it's true we it need does, it. it it does good things for us so if you're just <laughs> listening to our podcast start downloading them yes. because it helps us so we can stay on air and pay the rent right it's Kendrick? very true and yes by the way sean's a humble guy so you see him on social media <laughs> He's got like 80,000 followers. He could have like 6 million, but he doesn't because he's a good person and he's not bothering you guys at home. <laughs> so if you guys could just do us a favor and just subscribe to stuff, then we'd all be, we're all yeah, good yeah, then. All right, yeah. great. <laughs> we'll give you two thumbs up. Subscribe <laughs> and download. All yeah. right, brother. All right, buddy. I love you, man. <laughs> love you, man. I'll see you, man. I'll talk to you. All right. See you, buddy.